spirit of truth, the revealer of the secrets of the kingdom. We have come tonight gathered with our hearts open, ready to receive. We pray in the name of Jesus that you will grant us understanding. We are desperate, we are hungry. And we ask, O oh God, that you will move in an unusual way. Open our eyes, open our hearts. In the name of Jesus Christ, let the sick be healed, let the oppressed be delivered, and let Jesus be glorified. Amen and amen. God bless you. Please be seated. Good to see everyone tonight. Hallelujah. Very powerful song from the worship team. I remain committed to helping us experience the reality of life in the spirit, the reality of life in the kingdom. The Bible says, I will give you pastors after my heart. And their assignment is to open us up to the deep things of the spirit. Hallelujah. It says, meditate on these things. Give yourself wholly to them. And it says, your profiting will appear unto all. So every time we come, I like for your heart to remain open. Be passionate, don't be distracted. Receive with meekness the engrafted word. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. I want to share something very powerful tonight and we'll pray. Truly, it is my commitment that every service this year becomes one that will open us up to very deep dimensions in the spirit. It's a year of dominion and it takes the understanding of truth to be able to walk in dominion. Acts chapter 20 and verse 32, popular scripture. It says, I commend you to God, Paul is teaching, and to the word of his grace, he says, that is able to, number one, build you up, build you up, capacity. Number two, give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified. So the word builds, and it can grant us access. Hallelujah. What I'm teaching tonight is relevant both to the advancement of the purposes of God and then by extension, listen very carefully, defines the quality of our lives. Praise the Lord. Revelation chapter 12. The Bible reveals a very interesting story from verse 7. It's a story that is very old and then it reveals a tragedy that becomes the basis for the saints to access dominion in the spirit. And there was war in heaven. Look up. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. And the dragon fought against his angels. We are reading to verse 9. And prevailed not, neither was their place found any more in heaven. Nine. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceived the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were with him. Jump to verse 12, and then we'll come back to 11. Therefore, rejoice. As a result of what happened to Lucifer, he said, Rejoice ye heavens, and ye that dwell therein. Why? Because Satan has been cast. However, woe to the inhabitants of the earth. There is trouble now. Rejoice in heaven. Finally it is finished. Satan is out of that domain. However, woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. Two locations that are very serious, the earth and the sea. When you go to the book of the beginning, to Genesis, 
you will understand that everything came out of water. Water is symbolic of abundance. The earth, the trees come out of it. And now he says, woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. Why? He says, for the devil is come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he had but a short time. Now go to verse 11. And they overcame him by two big mysteries. Number one is called the blood of the Lamb. Not blood. The blood of the Lamb. Number two, they overcame him by the word of their testimony. Open our eyes to God. Grant us understanding. Holy, blessed is he who comes. Holy, holy, blessed is he who comes in the name of God. Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed is he. It's interesting that there was a lamentation in heaven. The lamentation. There are very few times in the Bible where there is a combination of joy and lamentation at the same time. Heavens rejoice. The rebel has been thrown out of that domain. But earth, woe to you. Because the season is about to unfold. There is an old serpent that had been cast down to your domain. And it is important that you are aware. Listen very carefully. One of the reasons why the saints must walk in dominion, it is because there is an old story. There is an old serpent. The Bible calls him the devil and Satan. That he has been cast down and he is looming around the horizon. A real personality alongside the angels. Hallelujah. And the Bible lets us know that he does many things. And one of it is to deceive. Another is to accuse. And he has been sent down. And that means the inhabitants of the earth must not be ignorant. If heaven is saying woe to the inhabitants of the earth, it is because there is a potential for catastrophe if the saints do not understand this and walk in dominion. Are we together? Praise the Lord. When we talk about dominion, generally, you know, most people just say dominion, you know, and shall take over and all of that. It is, it is not the idea. Listen carefully. The idea is not some fleshly advancement of people. No. It is the fulfillment of prophecy that predates even our arrival here. That there is an old story. It's a story of the rebellion of a serpent that has been casted down to this domain of God's kingdom. And the Bible tells us that everything from the second heaven has been affected by His presence. The earth and the sea. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So if we must reign in life and advance the purposes of God and also advance our individual lives, we must sustain the intelligence and the understanding in the spirit that grants us victory not just over the elements of nature, not just over the systems and the structures, but over this enemy of God's progress called the devil. And the key, the Bible tells us, is to be able to sustain the light and the knowledge and the illumination that will grant us access to victory. I found a scripture that I think um, will really bless us. Psalm 74 verse 20. Psalm 74 it says, have respect unto the covenant. And the reason is because the dark places of the earth are full of the habitations of cruelty. 
That means, Lord, remember the system and the strategy you have put in place for the victory of the saints. Because outside of it, we will be exposed to the cruelty that comes with this system. So the Bible tells us that the earth is dark and cruel because of this being that continues to remain an arch enemy to the purposes of God. And then the Bible says our knowledge of the truth of God's kingdom becomes our bailout system. Lord, respect, honor the covenant. Why? Because the dark places of the earth are full of the habitations of cruelty. I want to open our eyes to a very, very, very powerful mystery that will help us. I will be showing us several systems that make for dominion. And one of it tonight is probably, I would say, I may not say it's the biggest, it may not be fair to say it's the biggest, but one of the chiefest reasons why the saints may not experience the fullness of the life, the power, and the glory of God. Hallelujah. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 4. That this Satan has now become what? Look up please. Who suddenly coronated him to become the God of this world. The last time we read, he is a victim who was thrown out from heaven. Now Satan was not just roaming around the earth. He had manipulated the system and risen in ranking to now become the God of this world. He was not thrown as the God of this world. He was thrown as one who was exposed to the vengeance and the judgment of God. But Satan, to show you the extent of his, the flawlessness of his craftsmanship, through the ages manipulated systems and men until he rose to this rank and earned himself an office as the God of this world. Follow me carefully. Are we together? Are you following my story? So it starts with a tragic event in Revelation that a seeming weak being was thrown to the earth and God warned us. He said, be careful with this guy. Don't take him for granted. This Satan is not foolish. He is a master at deception and is a master at accusation. Hey, pay attention to this being. If you ignore him, it will be to your peril. And here is the effect of neglecting his warning. Satan suddenly has found his way through the ages and crowned himself a name that even the Bible honors the God of this world. He couldn't be the God in heaven. But he found himself in space. This is, are we following together? <laughs> you reign, you reign, sons are on sea. God, God, you are my is showing us the continuity of the ministry of this strange serpent who is called Satan. He is also called the devil. How he rose to this rank is a mystery that we all know. We have to go to the book of Genesis to see the, the showmanship of his artistry. That this man is anything but foolish. Are we together now? There was a reason why heaven was crying and saying, Earth, on your own you are already in trouble. That this man deceived one third of the angels in heaven. Oh, Earth, there is trouble. There is trouble and we will not hide it. That Satan. And now we see that Satan has earned himself a title. Now, let me tell you, whoever starts as a weak man in life, and becomes a lord of anything to be respected. 
who assisted him is a mystery. How the other demons did not fight him and remain loyal even in his rebellion is a mystery we must learn. When the Bible says be wise as serpent, it's a technology that we must employ for our dominion in today's world. What did Satan use that even in the face of failure the angels did not run away? Look at this. In the Paul is a dangerous man. That guy is a dangerous man. How Paul saw this. The Bible says, now the God of this world, and then it now gives us a picture of one of the ways that he has sustained his ascendance. The Bible says there is something he does to the minds of a people and a territory that Satan is not concerned about your eyes. The God of this world operates by blinding the minds of them that believe not. Left, he is afraid of one thing. The Bible exposes the one act enemy of Satan. And the enemy is not angels. The enemy is not even men. The enemy is light. Now watch this please. Understand my teaching tonight. Here is a man who has been cast down on earth. And while he was on earth, the Bible tells us that he found a way of achieving this goal. From generation to generation, he is able to cast a spell upon the minds of people and find a way of inhibiting individuals, territories, families from seeing the glorious gospel of Christ who is the image of God that when that light is allowed to shine on them there is an effect it is impossible for that light to shine upon an individual to shine upon a people the Bible finally reveals that Satan can be afraid and it tells us what he's scared of not angels not heaven not prayer not man Are you following me tonight? We're dealing with something very serious. So Satan does not fear technology. Satan does not fear education. Satan does not fear men. Satan does not even seem to have, if he dead God, who will he fear? But there is a mystery that something light does to Satan. Satan is threatened by light. He goes out of his way. He does not take chances. From children to the elderly ones, he sees you. His first test is, are you seeing? The moment you are seeing, you are a threat to Satan. That the, the power of Satan is when you are blind. Blindness. That when a man cannot see, the Bible says that Satan will lead him and remain the God of this world. Are we together? So this is it. That there is one of the dominion systems of the kingdom that the Bible guarantees as revealed by Satan's own testimony that when Satan finds men, he doesn't tie their hands, he doesn't tie their finances, he doesn't tie anything. He goes straight to their minds, the center of illumination and knowledge, and that he can cast a spell once that happens. How many of you have seen people remove something from a scorpion? There's something they say, a scorpion is weak, but once you remove that thing, you can allow it to go around. This is it. Let me show you a scripture. I pray that God will open our eyes to see something powerful tonight. Matthew chapter 13 starts from verse 10 to 17. Jesus, your Jesus, my Jesus, mentor Jesus. When Jesus is teaching, listen to him. He is communicating an intelligence. Remember, he called himself the light of the world. That means already that name is a threat. I, I, I hope we already identified what scares Satan. That the moment there is the mention of light, Satan is confused. 
Now, Jesus did not bring light. He now came and said, I am. So when the light is speaking, it means anything he tells you is a weapon of victory. Light me, Lord. 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 That scripture now, and the disciples came and said unto him, Jesus, we have a question for you. Why speakest thou unto them in parables? Why have you borrowed a system of communication? Why do you not talk directly? Why do you borrow from agriculture and borrow from nature? And he says it has been given to you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. But unto them it has not been given. Next verse please. It says, for whosoever has to him shall be given. And he shall have more abundance. And whosoever hath not, from him shall be taken even that which he hath. That's him. It says, therefore, watch this. Speak I to them in parables, because seeing they see not, and hearing they hear not, neither do they understand. That means I borrowed parables. Because there is a condition with these people. Are we together now? The, the, the parable is like a, a therapy to try to communicate. There is a fundamental condition with these people that something has happened to them that although they are looking, they are not seeing. Although you speak, they cannot hear. And they will not understand. 14. It says, and in them is fulfilled the prophecy. Isaiah saw this. We say, by hearing ye shall hear and shall not understand, and seeing ye shall see and not perceive. Next verse, please. It says, For these people's heart is wax cross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes they have what? Closed. Lest at any time they should see with their eyes, hear with their ears, they should understand, and they should be converted. And I should heal them. He's revealing a condition. Jesus is saying, when I look at these people, although they are looking back at me, there is something that the God of this world, Satan, has done to them. I will have to use a parable to help them at least understand. And that this is the condition that a people can look and yet not see. A people can hear and yet not understand. Are we blessed? Hmm. Therefore, in God's definition, listen carefully, blindness, spiritual blindness, you may want to write this down. As I was preparing, the Holy Spirit gave me a very powerful definition. That blindness in the kingdom and in the spirit is not limited to the closing of your eyes. That blindness in the spirit is also an alteration or a deviation of your perception from actual reality. Write this down. An alteration or a deviation of your perception from actual reality. A deviation, an alteration of your perception from actual reality is blindness. So, blindness does not mean you do not have imagery or perception, but that Satan has a way of altering your perception so that you no longer perceive actual reality. The Bible says it is a strategy that Satan used for many years until he ascended the throne to become the God of this world. Lest at any point they should see with their eyes, hear with their ears, and they should understand with their hearts. Please look up. That spiritual blindness is the chief tool 
that Satan used from the time he fell, roaming around the length and breadth of this domain, that Satan became a master. He created all kinds of systems to make sure that light, illumination, that blindness, he breaks the sins with spiritual blindness, not by closing their physical eyes, but by deviating their perceptions so that although they are seeing, but what they are seeing is not reality. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Light the candle. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. I want to show you how that the dominion of the saints is at the mercy of many mysteries, but chiefest among them is the mystery of open eyes. The Bible even said, we all with unveiled face. It's amazing that the face must be unveiled first before we see and we are changed. We all with unveiled face, the veil that Satan casted, that something must happen to you before you behold his glory as in a mirror. And then you are changed from glory to glory. I want to show you, let's study scripture. And we are going to look at certain things that, that can plague a people when there is blindness. And there is no other place to start than to go to Genesis 27. Let's start from there. Genesis 27. I want to show you a powerful mystery. Can you pray in the spirit while you are turning there? Genesis 27. And it came to pass. Please be patient with me. It's a long reading. Just, just look at the projector. When Isaac was old, look up please. The Bible says his eyes were dim. Notice that for some reason the Bible does not tell us the other things happening to him. It doesn't seem to care about it. The Bible now focuses on his eyes. That it was dim so that he could not see. And then he calls this from a standpoint of blindness. Watch this now. We are about to see what spiritual blindness can do. Even to the anointing. And he said unto him, My son, and he said unto him, Behold, here I am. Long reading. Please let's hurry up. He says, I do not know the day of my death. Three. Now therefore, take, I pray thee, the weapons, thy quiver and thy bow. Go to the field and take me some venison. Uh-huh. And make me savory meat such as I love, and bring it to me that I may eat, and my soul may bless thee before I die. So Jacob is about to release the anointing, he's about to bless, he's about to speak. I mean, Isaac. And then Rebecca, now look at this, my God. God scriptures. Whatever kills your appetite for scripture is really destroying you. And in the name of Jesus, if your appetite for scripture has died, let it be restored this night. And Rebecca heard, watch this. Rebecca heard a conversation between Isaac and Esau. And Esau went to the field to hunt for venison and to bring it. Six. Rebecca spoke to Jacob, her son. He said, Behold, I heard thy father speak unto Esau, thy brother, saying, Bring me venison and make me savory meat that I may eat, bless you before my death. Eight. Now therefore, my son, obey my voice according to that which I command thee. Go now to the flock and fetch me then two good kids of the goats, and I will make them savory meat for thy father, such as he loveth. And thou shalt bring it to thy father, that he may eat, and he may bless thee before his death. Eleven. And Jacob said to Rebekah, his mother, Behold, now watch this, there was a problem. And the problem is that my brother is a hairy man. I am of smooth skin. 
although my father is blind, he will feel my body and find out I am not hairy. Read this. 12. My father paradventure will feel me and I shall seem to him as a deceiver, 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 deceiver. Take note there. And I shall bring a curse upon me and not a blessing. Next verse. And his mother said to him, Upon me be thy cost, my son. Only obey my voice and go fetch me them. 14. And he went and fetched and brought them to his mother. And his mother made savory meat such as his father loved. 15. And Rebekah took what? Goodly raiment. Everybody say blindness. That blindness can cause you to perceive. But you do not perceive reality. Watch this. That everywhere Satan is operating, he will give a feeling to of what is reality. But it is not reality. It is the way he thwarts dominion in this kingdom. He took goodly raiment of our eldest son Esau, which were behind the house, and put them on Jacob, the younger son, 16. And she put the skin of the kids and the goats upon his hands and upon the smooth of his neck. And she gave him the savory meat, and he went to meet his father, 18. And he came to his father and said, My father, what's this? And he said, Here am I. He says, Who art thou, my son? Next verse. And Jacob said to his father, I am what? Esau, thy firstborn. I have done according as thou badest me. Arise, I pray thee, sit and eat my venison, that thy soul will bless thee. 20. And Isaac said to his son, How is it that you have found it quickly? Some things in life don't happen fast. What suddenly happened that you just came fast with this kind of result? He said, and he said, Because the Lord thy God brought it to me. Next verse. And Isaac said to Jacob, Come near, I pray thee, that I may feel thee, my son, whether thou be my very son or not. Remember, this problem was founded upon blindness. That if the eyes of Isaac was opened, the possibility of this deception would not even start. Are we together now? And now, because the eye is blind, you will have to make do with other inferior faculties of perception. And now expose himself to the ministry of this one who is called the God of this world. And that he operates by deviating men from reality. Now, don't forget this is an anointed man about to bless. 22 is a mystery I do not want you to forget in your life. Look up please. And Jacob went near unto Isaac his father and felt him and said, The voice is Jacob's voice, but the hands are the hands of this. This is the mystery. I'm hearing Jacob's voice, but because I do not have perception, I can think it is this. So I'm about to I'm about to mistransfer the blessing because my eyes are dim and I will have to depend on my hearing and my touching. Now a possibility to manipulate me exists. I am hearing Jacob's voice, but I cannot deny that Jacob is not hairy. I mean you, you do not have hair in one day. Now Jacob, Isaac is confused because blindness has opened up a possibility although he's hearing the voice of Jacob he's feeling Esau who is not Esau next verse and he discerned him not because his hands were hairy as his brother's as his brother Esau's hands so he did what? With all the anointing that was on Isaac, the mother connived with Jacob. And they have two limitations. One, you cannot change your voice, but I know your father will want to feed you. And he said, let me put hair upon you, so that he will think to this Jacob. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth, that that old serpent has come with great fury 
that he can go around to the sea and you are seeing the operation of this happen. Watch this. And he said, Thou art my son, Esau. Now, here, this is not what I'm teaching tonight, but isn't it amazing how deeply spiritual these men knew? They had an understanding of the spirit. There was something that was within Isaac's spirit that when it came out on whoever, it will produce a continuity of the result that they had from their lineage. Results are truly spiritual. That there is something that can come upon a man and control possibilities. Here's what we are seeing now. Here I am, 25. He says, bring it near to me and I will eat of my son's venison and my soul may bless me. And he brought it near and he did eat. And he brought him wine and he drank, 26. Oh dear. And his father, Isaac, said unto him, come near now and kiss me, my son. And he came here and kissed him and smelled the smell of his raiment and blessed him and said, See, the smell of my son is as the smell of a field which the Lord has blessed. Therefore, a blessing is about to be misappropriated. Although anointed, but blindness is about to channel something now, there are all kinds of dimensions of perceiving this, but this is the message that I want to communicate to you today. That he said, Therefore, God give thee of the dew of heaven and the fatness of the earth and plenty of corn and wine. 29. Let people serve thee and nations bow to you. That means these results are not ordinary. Something happens in the secret that produces this outcome in the public. Here is a man who is blind and yet he's calling men who he has not seen. That wherever you find them, I make them serve you. The blessing. Abraham did it to me. Now my dear son, I cannot go to the grave. There are things we carry to control the results that we command. And now we, we exercise dominion in our days. Not because of who. There were mysteries that we carry. We preserve like treasures. Now I cannot die with it. If I die with it, you will suffer. And let me release this upon you. And he's saying, Be Lord over thy brethren. And let thy mother's son bow down to you. Cause be everyone that cursed you. And bless thee he that blessed thee, 30. And it came to pass, as soon as Isaac made the end of blessing Jacob, Jacob was yet cast gone from his presence, the presence of Isaac, his father, that Esau, his brother, came in from his hunting. Spiritual blindness. A man is about to bless and the blessing goes to the wrong place. Not because anything affected his anointing, but something affected his eyes. Are, are you getting this now? Are you learning something? Who see, they will not see. He felt him and did his best to be sure that it was Esau. And the blessing went to Jacob. The Bible says, it came to pass as soon as Isaac, okay, 31. I'll find some of me one or two of us and I'll stop. And he also had made a savory meat and brought it unto his father and said unto his father, Let my father arise and eat of his son's venison that my soul may bless him. And Isaac, his father, said unto him, Who art thou? And he said, I am thy son, thy firstborn Esau. Next verse. And Isaac trembled very exceedingly and said, Who? Where is he that had taken venison and brought it to me? And I have eaten of all before thou camest, and I have blessed him, and yea, he shall be blessed. That it is possible for God to speak concerning a man. But where your lifting comes, blindness can be casted on that person. 
and there will be a misappropriation of prophetic blessings. And another will take your place in destiny. Listen, the Bible says the things that are written at what time, they are for our learning, so that we through the comfort of Scripture may find hope. He's blessed. He shall be blessed. Next verse. And when Esau had this word, please look up. Ah, may God take away, may God take away the limitation of science and the carnality of our days on our spiritual life. Look at this. Please look at this. A full grown man who is a professional hunter breaks down and is crying like a baby. Why? Did he lose the ability to hunt? That the realm of the spirit is so programmed that dominion is not ordinary. He stands with his skill to hunt. He stands with the animal and yet he weeps. Jacob, what did you do? You took away something that would have connected me to a strange lineage of dominion. This is what will make situations and circumstances bow to me. You've heard me say it is what is on you that controls what is around you. It is not a lie. He cried with a great and exceeding bitter cry. Why will an adult cry? The father did not lose the ability to speak. That means there is something about the blessing that we need to learn. He said it's gone. He said, Father, bless me, even me, oh my Father, find something and tell me. He said, thy brother came in subtly and had taken away. The blessing is real. It is tangible. It can move from place to place. The blessing is not like matches that you can carry and say there's another one. There is an exact body of spiritual mysteries that can be cast upon a man that will turn things around in your life. This is what led Isaac to Esau. Blindness made an anointed man to misbless. I'd like you to pray whilst you are seated. Lord, open my eyes. Take away spiritual blindness from my life. That my place in destiny will not be sabotaged through blindness. Hallelujah. Blindness made the anointing to be wrongly directed. Blindness. Blindness short secreted the potential of the anointing. Scripture number two, Genesis chapter 19. This is a story of Lot in Sodom and Gomorrah. Please look up. And there came two angels, verse 1 19, to Sodom. And Lord sat at the gate of Sodom. Please look up. And Lord, seeing them, rose up to meet them and bowed himself and his face towards the ground. We're reading to 11. And he said, Behold now, my Lord, turn in, I pray you, into your servant's house and tarry all night. And wash your feet and you shall rise up early and go your ways. And they said, Nay, but we will abide in the street all night. The angels were going to stay in the street. And he pressed upon them greatly. And they turned him unto him and entered into his house. Watch this. And he made them a feast and did bake on living bread and they did eat. Now, before he laid down the men in the city, even the men of Sodom compassed the house round about, both old and young, all the people from every quarter, five. And they called upon Lot and said unto him, Where are the men which came in to thee this night? Bring them unto us that we may know them. Six. And Lot went out at the door and said to them and shut the door after him. And said, I pray you, brethren, do not so wickedly. Eight. Behold, now I have two daughters which have not known any man. Let me, I pray you, bring them out unto you. And do ye unto them 
as is good in your eyes. Only unto this men do nothing. For therefore came they under the shadow of my roof. Now, look at this. And they said, stand back. And they said again, this one fellow came into sojourn. And he will needs be a judge. Now we will deal what we did that with them. And they pressed so upon the man, even Lot, and came near to break the door. Look at the kind of madness of these people. But the men, the angels now, put forth their hand and put Lot into the house to them. And did what? Shut the door. Next verse. And they smote the men that were at the door, not with leprosy, not with paralysis, not with HIV, but with blindness. Both small and great. The effect, I reject it in your life. But you go ahead and say it. So that they weary themselves to find the door. The door was there. But because there was blindness, the Bible says they weary themselves. It's amazing how close you can be. But because your eyes do not see, you can stand in front of a door. The Bible did not say they tried. They weary themselves to find the door. He casted blindness on them. He did not take the door away. He did not shift them away. He knew that opening the door is useless when your eyes is blind. There are times that Satan does not need to take you away from your breakthrough. He just needs to make you blind. And you can be so close, yet so far. Lord, take away blindness from my life. Open your mouth and pray. Have Let me not be near the door. Door stands for opportunity. Access. But because blindness is upon the eyes of a person, a people, a territory, a nation, they can be closed to doors, and yet the doors do not open. They weary themselves to find the door. They weary themselves to find the door. If someone prays, they worry themselves to find the door. The door of marriage, the door of finances, the door of ministerial exploits. They worry themselves to find the door because their eyes were blind. The door of influence, the door of communion, the door of strength, peace. Close, but with eyes that are blind. Someone is praying because in this season of dominion, God must open your eyes to see that the men were close to the door, yet their hands could not reach the door. The miracle of open eyes, illumination, the greatest threat to the prince of darkness, dominion by light, victory over the God of the cosmos. Hallelujah. Lift it down. They wearied themselves to find the door. The door was there. They were there. Their hands were held in, but their eyes were blind. Scripture number three. Second Kings chapter six. From verse eight. You see the rain of your love. You feel the wind of your spirit. Now the heartbeat of heaven let us hear.
Hallelujah. Shalom Sabrakatus. Please be sensitive. May God show you what I want to show you now. It says the king of Syria. This is Bible. Once upon a time, the king of Syria warred against Israel. And he took counsel with his servants, saying, In such and such a place shall be my camp. Nine. And the man of God sent unto the king of Israel, saying, Beware that when the eyes of a man is open, you can see. See events. No things before they happen. Remember, that's the ministry of the Holy Spirit to the church. Beware that thou pass not such and such a place. Your safety is at the mercy of your sight. It says, For Peter, the Syrians are come down. Then, and the king of Israel said to the place which the man of God told him and warned him of and saved himself there, not once, not twice. Sight will defend you and sight will give you safety for your lifetime. Sight will not only bail you out once, twice. It will continue for as long as you can see. Next verse. Therefore, the heart of the king of Syria was so troubled for this thing. And he called his servants and said unto them, Will ye not show me which of us is for the king of Israel? Next verse. And one of his servants said, None, my lord, O king, but Elisha the seer. Elisha the seer. Elisha the seer. The one who has received the miracle of open eyes. But Elisha the prophet that is in Israel, telleth the king of Israel the word that thou speakest in thy bedchamber the power of sight that you do not need to go around the world to command dominion from where you are is a mystery of priesthood that God can give you eyes to see and know you are legislating from distance and, and kilometers from a point by the power of sight not vision sight the seeing eyes Listen, sit down please. He said, and he said, go and spy where he is, that I may send and fetch him. And it was told him, saying, behold, he is in Dothan. Let's pass. Shall we provoke Subakata? Therefore send ye hither horses and chariots, and, great, and a great host. And they came by night, and compassed the city round about. And when the servant of the man of God, look up this, was risen early and gone forth, behold, a host compassed the city, both with horses and chariots. And his servant said unto him, Alas, master, how shall we do? Next verse. And he answered, Fear not. That means fear does not just go. Fear goes when light comes. There are things you see. And if you do not see them, fear will remain in your life forever. The servant was innocent. He was only limited. Next verse. For they that be with us are greater than they that be with them. That was the verse 17. This will be our prayer this night. And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes that he may see. Open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw, and behold, the mountain was full of horses. Open his eyes over that idea that in that small room he can see that what you are holding that looks like a small idea can be a global miracle. Open her eyes that she may see. Please hold on. Look up, please. And he saw that the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elisha. And when they came down to him, watch this, 
Elisha did not need to fight. An army is useless when they are blind. Elisha did not pray, Lord, let their weapons drop. No. Elisha did not pray, Lord, make them like me. No. Elisha said, I know that Satan is the God of this world. And I know that Satan can drive where there is blindness. It's a weapon when it comes upon a man in the cosmos. That man becomes a slave. And he, look at this. The prophet said, he prayed unto the Lord and said, smite these people. That means blindness is not a blessing. Smite these people. I pray thee with what? Blindness. And he smote them with blindness according to the word of Elisha. Next verse. And it came to pass, when they were come into Samaria, that Elisha said, watch this, as a blind army, they were led to Samaria. And Elisha said, Lord, open the eyes of these men that they may see. And the Lord opened their eyes and they saw, and behold, they were in the midst of Samaria, defenseless. They had now been surrounded by people who could kill them immediately. Next verse. And the king of Israel said, Elisha, when he saw them, my father, shall I smite them? Shall I smite them? Next verse. And he answered, Thou shalt not smite them. Would thou smite those whom thou hast taken captive? How did he take them captive? There is no point fighting when blindness comes. This is powerful. It's a weapon that has been used to enslave Africa, respectfully speaking, for decades. It's a weapon that Satan used to enslave our parents. Culture and aberration of perceptions that will not allow the glory and the power of God to be revealed. Listen. Would thou smite those whom thou hast taken captive with thy sword and with thy bow? He says, set bread and water before them that they may eat and drink and go to their master. There is no better way of humiliating an army than doing this. An army comes with their swords well trained. You make them blind, open their eyes to see, and now in fear and terror, you give them bread and say, take this report back to your king. Next verse. And he prepared great provision for them. And when they had eaten and drunk, he sent them away. And they went to their master. What was the result? So the bands of Syria came no more into the land of Israel. Whom the God of this world had blinded their eyes, blinded their minds. Listen to me. There are all kinds of doors in this season set before us by the Spirit. But just because the doors are open does not mean you can possess and walk in dominion. The mystery is the miracle of open eyes. Tonight our cry is the cry of Elijah. Oh God, open his eyes. Listen, it's because of the limited scope of life that we have here. Fear over the future. Fear over a job. Fear my life. How is it going to be? The secret is not even just casting out the spirit of fear. The spirit of revelation. Illumination. Now watch this. Let me give you one scripture. Mark chapter 8. We are going to pray. We'll start from verse 22. Look at this interesting scripture. And he cometh to Bethsaida. And they bring what? A blind man unto him. And besought him to touch him. This is Jesus. And he took the blind man by the hand. Watch this. And led him out of the town. And when he had spit on his eyes, he put his hands upon him and asked him if he saw aught. 
And he looked and he said, I see, but my perception is altered. I am seeing, but I am not seeing actual reality. I am seeing. Now I know God can prosper, but I still don't know the dynamics. I, I now know that people can be anointed, but what the real secret to the anointing is, I, can, I know that people can rise in this kingdom. I'm beginning to see. But I'm seeing men like trees. I have started seeing the secret to wealth and prosperity, but I is still hazy. I've started learning the dynamics of the anointing, but it's still hazy. I've started prophesying, but it's, it's, it's still two out of twenty. I, I'm, I'm, I'm seeing, but I'm not seeing well. And he looked up and said, I see men as trees walking. Do you know what this means? If you see men as trees walking, that means they are not moving. After that, he put his hands again on his eyes and made him look up. And he was restored and saw every man clearly. And saw every principle clearly. And saw every formula clearly. And saw the parts in the spirit clearly. You are brooding. chapter 1 from verse 17. Now you will understand Paul's prayer. Why Paul prayed to a people who were under a territory that was bewitched by a sea goddess called Diana. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ the Father of glory may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. 18. Here's the prayer. The eyes of your understanding. Being what? That he may know. When your eyes are enlightened. Authority. Remember. We agree. That the one thing that threatens Satan. Is light. That the brighter your light. Your spiritual illumination in experience. The more practical and real your dominion becomes. Luke chapter 1. Luke chapter 1. For as much as many have taken in hand to set forth in order a declaration of those things which are most shortly believed among us. We are reading to verse 4. Even as they delivered them unto us. Look up please. 
which from the beginning were eyewitnesses and ministers of the word. Uh huh. Verse 3. It seemed good unto me also, having what? Had perfect understanding. This is a dimension that a believer can get into. You can attain a dimension. Listen, I have taught you here that it is the pursuit of God and the knowledge of His person that is infinite. The principles that make for the practical dominion of the saints here and now are finite. And the Bible says you can press to a point of quintessence that you can have perfect understanding of how many things? Perfect understanding of the principles, all things, from the very first. And it is by that authority that I write unto you, most excellent Theophilus. Next verse. That thou mightest know the certainty. In other words, I am not communicating to you, Dr. Luke is saying, from a standpoint of ignorance. In as much as I continue to grow, but on this matter, I have sustained perfect understanding. He says, wherein thou hast been instructed. Look at me, my brothers and my sisters, hear me. The blindness that is upon the saints, we must fight it until it is done. Otherwise, dominion will remain in fear. For many years, I tried to look for what exactly scares Satan. Because I never saw him afraid of angels. They fought him. I didn't even see him afraid of man. I didn't even see him afraid of Jesus. But there it is. Light. The effect of spiritual illumination on your eyes and on your mind. There is something you can see that the age-long captivity of witchcraft and divination that has tied down your families. Listen, you can go for deliverance all your life, but if your eyes doesn't see that there is something about the reality of priesthood that can veto foundations, and this is not just some Pentecostal talk, in reality, The Bible now says they overcame him by two mysteries. Number one, the blood of the Lamb. The blood of the Lamb is the legitimate ground upon which the saints have been grafted into Christ. The blood of the Lamb becomes the propitiation for our sins. Are we together now? And now through the blood of it has been opened to the saints, the new one living way the Bible teaches. Are we together now? We can now come boldly. Then the second weapon is the word of their testimony. The word of their testimony. The Bible says their testimonies are able to make wise the simple. Listen to me. My brothers and my sisters hear me. Light is the secret to dominion. Light, but not just light carelessly. The light of the Word of God, articulated with perfect understanding, communicated to the saints that when you believe it, who has believed our report? The Bible says, To such a man have the arm of the Lord been stretched forth. There is a dimension of light that governs wealth and prosperity. There is a dimension of light that governs interest and access in the heart of a generation. There is a dimension of light, listen to me, that governs longevity. There is a dimension of light that governs favor. There is a dimension of light that governs speed. We must press by the Spirit. Listen to me. We must press by the in this dark world that continues to become darker. Do you know the higher you rise, the more perfect understanding will be required. There are certain levels of ignorance that will not be tolerated again at certain realms. It is expected that as you attain unto those realms, you will have illumination sufficient to be predictable in your outcomes. 
It is not when you go to a crusade ground that you will be guessing whether the power of God will move or not. It's too risky. The people are too sick and angry to allow you to try. You can experiment now and keep going. But if at all you cry that God should keep you on a crusade ground, then heaven must be able to vex for you and say in one hour you will capsize hell and bring judgment to the camp of the enemy. Do you understand the secrets of the kingdom? Have they come upon you? Has the veil been taken away from your eyes to see? Open down my eyes that I may behold wondrous things. You can see it, my brothers and my sisters, and yet never understand. There is something you can see, my dear worship people. You will be plugged into a fountain of an endless stream of stunning tree. It will be strange. You will be like the tree that is planted. Songs will flow from heaven. You will not write them. They will come. There is a dimension you will plug into. That favor is as if they connected a machine to you and everybody on earth. There is a dimension you will walk into. Look at the way Elijah, Elisha, seemed to be playing with God's intelligence. Lord, open their eyes and he opened. Lord, close their eyes and he closed. Okay, open it again and he opened. You try to say that and see how difficult it is. If you can open an eye, you can open a city. The same grace it takes to open one eye is the grace it takes to open the two lit gates of a city. That with one utterance, this is how we dominate over territories. So that your presence now becomes an advantage to any territory. You can stand from one position like a herbalist and speak to the gates of a city. Be open, tita and tita. And suddenly all kinds of good things come. Dominion, sovereign control by the power of light. That you carry this thing on your head and you know you carry it. You know it's there. It is there, unquestionable. Koinonia, please hear me. Because this is the realm and the dimension that you must step into. It's a dimension of dominion. That when you stand, you know what to do. You know what to do. The elements know your voice. You know what to do. You, you understand the, the spiritual technology of making things happen. The dynamics of manifestation. Over all my darkness, you are causing your light to shine from darkness. You are That you can look at your loved ones and say, dear people, salvation has come. My eyes have seen. My eyes have seen. My eyes have seen. I have seen it. The way out. I have seen the way of the Spirit. It's a mystery. I know what it takes to set this family free from the age-long captivity. And I know what it takes to restore the time that has been lost. Listen, the days that are coming will require individual understanding of this light. It is good to enjoy covering grace and covering. But let me tell you, the demands of destiny will require that you know Satan. That you know the cosmos and you can stand without fear. Because you understand the spiritual arsenals that have been made available. Not because you heard a preacher. Ah! Your life becomes a plethora of miracles. 
Because you have now come, you have risen a pedestal in the spirit with open eyes. You see things from perfect reality. No aberration of your understanding. You know it that this is the secret to prosperity. I've got it. Great fathers of faith, when they caught different dimensions, they, they expressed themselves in different ways. Some of them sounded like they were arrogant. Some of them sounded like they were, but the results, after many years. And Jesus himself knew what to do. Listen, let me tell you, Satan is not as invincible as light and time and blindness makes him look. The Bible calls these spirits rulers of darkness. That means that the jurisdiction of their dominion is when the spell of darkness is casted upon the saints. Paul himself was given an apostolic ministry to open the eyes of the blind, not just physically. I now see. This is why I've been falling under the anointing in spite of the prayer of deliverance. And it looks like I've not been free. Now the code has come to pass. I, I, I see. So this is the spirit that operates around my territory and makes young men to never rise. I've found it. I've seen it. Now I know. This is the operation and the mystery that makes every good thing to live in my life. That good things cannot last two weeks in my life. I found it. I found thy word and I did eat it. He says that it was a joy and a rejoicing to my soul. Our weightiness in the spirit is by the light of God's glorious grace that has been casted upon us. You are weighty in the spirit to the degree to which light, the threat to Satan, light. Smith Wigglesworth God's light about the dominion of the saints above principalities and powers. And one time he was sleeping and his room was shaking and he came out and saw a vision of the devil sitting and he went back to sleep. You are not worth my attention. No. The Bible says it's only those who are in the earth that cry. Now I've been lifted up and raised up with Christ. And I'm sitting in a domain that will not allow tears again. It is those who depend on the earth and the sea for their supplies that cry. Listen, please hear me. You may hear us talk like this and it looks like arrogance, but keep watching. One of the things that God will use the saints to do in this season is to disciple nations. That they will reveal the excellency of the ways of God. Are we together now? Yes. That God will bring us to a point where it will be like Paul and Barnabas where men will say this is Zeus and this is Hermes. Operating upon mysteries that are invincible. They do not fail. It may take time to see their potentials, but their potentials are wondrous. Right from where you are, hear me my brothers and my sisters, that in Christ, this is the kind of destiny of dominion that God has put. Shake off that limitation of your foundation. Shake off the limitation of where you came from. Apostle, I cannot speak English so well. No, I understand. But let it come upon you and let your eyes see it. And then you will watch the wonder, the wonder-working power of the ways of God. The Bible says His ways are hidden in the sea, and no man can even see the full springs to copy. It will take the Spirit of God, guiding men into all truth. But when He shows you, and your eyes see it, you have found it. Life is not haphazard. The more the light of God is casted upon us, we begin to see the lines that connect. We see what our father saw that very few people saw. And we begin to follow in that path. One step after another. Reminds me of the vision that I had many years ago. When the angel of the Lord held my hands. And then we were moving. And there was a small step and I was jumping from building to building. This is what God can make. 
a showmanship, a masterpiece of wonder with those who believe. When God says it's a year of dominion, please find a way of believing it. That God is not a man that he should lie. That God is not the son of man that he should repent. And that in spite of the fact that there is an adversary, find hope. He was already judged from heaven. And then the one who judged him from heaven granted an authorization for the saints to continue to keep him at bay. And that the secret to unending dominion with Satan and with the elements is light. Light. The light that shines upon your mind. Spiritual understanding. Illumination. That you will control wealth like God. You will control resources. You will control the loyalty of a generation as though you have casted a charm upon them. It is a mystery. None of these commodities are affordable in the earth realm. They are not bought with money. Education cannot buy them. Human connections cannot buy them. It resides in a realm that only your hunger can take you to. And when activated, it turns your life into a living wonder. It may take time. But my brothers and my sisters, hear me. When you see, then a generation will see you. The Lord is sharing this with us because He wants to take away the blindness that has limited us. I'm from Kaduna State. I'm from Plateau State. I'm from Kogi State. I am from Lagos. I am a Nigerian. I am an African. The same Lord is rich unto all, unto all, not unto some. The same Lord is rich, wealthy, lavish, benevolent. And he told Abraham, from where thou art, lift up your eyes. Not lift up your hands, not move forward. Lift up your eyes first. Because once I can walk on your perception and coordinate your understanding to see things as I see, then there is no limit. There is no limit, I'm telling you. Moses went up the mountain and he saw a vision of the tabernacle. When he came back, God said, reproduce it. He began to coordinate men for that tabernacle. When you see your breakthrough, when you see the next level, I don't just mean imaginary visions. I mean by the Spirit, the breath of the Spirit resting upon you. And suddenly you will see it. And shake yourself from that shock. Like Peter, the first gate opens for you. The second gate opens for you. Then you come to the iron gate. And the iron gate that opens you to the city. There is a gate that opens you to the city. The first gate opens you out of prison, but not to the city. The second gate sandwiches you between your yesterday and your tomorrow. But there is a gate that when it opens, the next thing you see is influence the city. And all three gates must open for dominion to walk. When Peter was bound, the angel came and the first gate takes you out of your condition where you are. But you are not yet at the place of influence. The city has not yet seen you. They are yet to partake of the blessings and the grace of your life. But you are, the chains have fallen. And then you come to the second gate. Your experience is still taking you forward. You are not where you were. But you are not where you need to be. And then you come to a strange gate that the Bible calls the iron gate. And the Bible says he has broken the gates of brass and cut the bars of iron in thunder. When that gate opens, the angel says, Go. The city is opened up for you. Opened up for you financially. Opened up for you spiritually. Listen, when it's time to pray, I really want us to pray from the depth of our heart. I came with a burden and I vowed a vow to God that all through this year, 
that the teachings that you would receive would mentor you. Did you know my greatest desire, my brothers and my sisters, is to watch God's people rise in power, in grace, manifesting the possibilities of the Christ here and now by the Spirit, validating these things that were spoken. There will have to be a generation that demonstrates that reality. Our fathers have shown us this is possible. They have communicated the dimensions of God given to them. Now the baton has been given to us. And we must run with perseverance the race that is set before us. We owe a generation a revelation of the Christ. A dimension of the spirit life that we cannot fail. We must let the generation that we minister to see Christ in a way and manner. It will take diligence. The start for light. Lord light, open to me the scroll. Let my eyes see. What did Papa Hagen see? What did Smith Wigglesworth see? What did Maria would what it has seen? Listen. Listen. It is important. The Bible says to wash our eyes with eyes out. To wash so that we can see. Lord, I am tired of seeing your financial principles wrongly. I'm tired. What is the secret of ministry? Why is it that anything I do in ministry fails? There is an aberrated view. I'm not seeing well. Let the veil be torn. Connect east and west. Show me the coordinates of success. Let me see and know and handle it. And like Apostle Peter, I can now say that the things we have seen, the things we have heard, the things our hands have handled, that of the word of life, that's what we teach. So that it will no longer be cunningly devised fables. Authority is vested upon you practically. That you can speak to men and nations and turn the climate over men to represent the favor of the Christ. Listen. The key to stop being afraid of Satan is not to run away from him, is to study him. When you understand and study the systems of the kingdom, and the spirit of grace and revelation comes to you and opens the scroll, and you see things as they are, then you will walk in dimensions of power and authority. You will see the predictability that comes to life. Now, there is a side effect to this. Listen to me. Not everybody will see things as you are seeing. Are we together? So you will return back home with this depth of conviction. And you will meet a shocking surprise. Because you are talking to largely blind people. And they will not see as you see. So you are going to pray and say, Lord, the kind of results that silences arguments. Listen, hear me. There are results that are open for contention and debates. But there are results that cause principalities and powers and men to stand in awe and say, this one is the finger of God. You are not only praying for light. You are praying for light that is cast upon you, that translates into a grace and an intelligence, producing results that are provable here and now. If it's in ministry, you cry, Oh God, please open my eyes to see. Not for some self-aggrandizement, no. We are talking about kingdom come. We are talking about the advancement of the purposes of God. Lord, open my eyes. Let me connect this financing once and for all. God of heaven, let me not spend my life trying to guess how these laws work. Open my eyes to see it, to eat of the riches and out of the fatness to feed nations. Hear me? We are going to pray. The first prayer point tonight is to open up to God with all your heart, your areas of darkness and ignorance. You are going to have to cry and say, Lord, I acknowledge 
you have helped me in this area, but I confess that my inadequacy in this area is glaring before me. That darkness is crying for your light. If you sustain the humility to cry before God, then your heart is open and you are ready to receive illumination in that area. So prayer point number one, Lord, behold the darkness around my life in this and that area. So cry to God. Find a position that is most convenient. We are praying to the God of heaven, the Father of peace. generation until you have obtained the keys that make for that blessing. Listen, it says let your light, it first must be your light. Not let God's light. Let your light that has now walked in you shine before men that they may see not your light, your results, your good deeds and glorify your father. So the first thing is you must have that light. Manifestation is impossible until you have encountered light, genuine light. You are going to cry, Father, like lightning from heaven, may the light required for every dimension of my life, let it fire from heaven to my destiny. Lift your voice.
Listen. You are going to rebuke what happened in Sodom from your life. That Lord, I am close to an opportunity. I am close. It may be business. It may be financial. It may be marital. It may be your health. It may be ministry. Let me not be close to the door of the next season. And yet blindness will make me weary myself. Give me clarity and precision. Open eyes at the gate. Open eyes at the gate. I stand at the gate of my next level. Open eyes when I stand at the door of the new gate. Open eyes at the gate. When, when Hagar was banished with Ishmael, they were in the desert. Watch this. The Bible says Sarah gave only a jug of water and sent Hagar away. A jug of water for a destiny journey. And then the Bible says that when the water was spent, Hagar began to cry. And the young lad began to cry. And the Bible says, God, he said, respect the covenant. Because we like the place, the waste places of darkness is a habitation of cruelty. And God had the voice of the young lad. Watch this. And the Bible says that when God came and he conversed with Hagar, suddenly Hagar's eyes was open and she saw an oasis. You can be standing. Do you know I have found out from experience that most of the things that will lift us are closed. There are few things that are outside your house. Almost everything you will need is in your house. You can be looking at the jar and the oil, but until you see clearly, you cannot see that that jar and oil can pay your debt. Are you getting what I'm saying now? The miracle of open eyes to know what to do. Past time, past season. To know what to do. Do you know, see, listen. If your eyes are closed, many good things will pass you and you will not see. And the thing about life is, all things don't come easy all times. There are things that when they leave, it will take a long time like the hand of a clock before it comes again. You may be looking for a job. And just because your eyes are closed, you can be looking at a newspaper and never see an opening. And the job will go and the next time they will call for a job again, maybe six years. You are going to say, Lord, open my eyes to redeem what you are bringing in this season. I don't want to miss out. I don't have that time to waste a day. So there are things you are doing Open my eyes. For no you are praying. Open my eyes. Open my eyes to God. Open my eyes to God. 
Hallelujah. Listen. I used to have a dear friend years ago. And I remember him telling me a very serious story. That in the early 90s, 1990, 1991, when they were tying water in Lagos, the Spirit of God brought an idea from heaven like fire. That once upon a time, or a time will come, where water will bring billions for people in this country. It didn't make sense. Listen carefully. At that time, water that you can fetch in a well, when they started what we now call pure water, he had the opportunity, but he could not see the potentials in it. And many years later, when people would become billionaires, the father has gone to be with the Lord. And he said, the father stood one day and said, my God, I would have been at the forefront of this. I heard the story of the sewage system in Lagos. That it was somebody God gave an idea. He saw what people did not see. And he started sewage. People laughed at him. And he made billions from it. Listen. It would take the opening of your eyes to stand and while everybody is looking, you are seeing. You are seeing a secret. There was something, listen to me. Papa Hagen was praying and God gave him an idea on how to sustain ministry. When Papa Hagen was getting old, Many people started trying that formula and it stopped working. And then there was a man by the name David Yongicho. He went to God and cried and said, Lord, what is the secret to church growth? And the Holy Ghost took him to the book of Acts and opened him up to what we now call in the body of Christ the cell system. But the system, even though it's working, Right now, because times change, you will need to keep seeing past season. What worked yesterday may fail tomorrow. That is why it is important that your eyes never go dim. Otherwise, yesterday's blessing can become tomorrow's cost. You will need the eyes that see. There are things that people did 20 years ago in ministry and would excel. You do it today. Because of the context of the generation you are ministering to, it may not work again. It is God that knows what the next 10 years will be. 20 years ago, nobody would believe that we'll be in such a, a, a web immersed world and only the God of heaven with the all seeing eye who can know what the next 10 years will be. And let me tell you, if God gives you the advantage of sight, you can go before a generation comes and wait for them there. Listen, I know what I'm saying. I'm not talking nonsense. I want you to believe me. There are things that God is doing in your life now because of what the future will look like. Who would have believed that a day will come, no matter how diligent you are with a typewriter, get any small child now, they don't know how to type, they swipe. You were not like that. Are we together? You find these little children and they are swiping. That's a generation. You say typewriter, they don't know what you are talking about. The next 10 years, the next 5 years, the next 20 years is not before any scientist. There is the eye 
The king of Syria said, Who reveals this secret before it happens? They said, It's none of us. There is a man who does not need to come to the inner chamber but can stay where he is and have the advantage of sight. This is going to be your prayer. Lord, what is the strategy for dominion? So, so logically speaking, in the years that come, open my eyes. Open my eyes. Open my eyes. Open my eyes. We are rounding up. Please be patient. Give us Luke chapter 4, please. From verse 15. Luke chapter 4 and verse 15. Go to 16. And he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up please look up and as his custom was he went into the synagogue on the sabbath day and stood up for to read next verse and there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah and when he had opened the book he found the place where it was written. Stop. Keep that scripture there. When the book was given, he found the place. The secret is written somewhere. It has to be somewhere. There is a place where it is written. The secret I need to see. The anointing. There has to be a book. There has to be a message somewhere. There are hundreds of koinonia messages. But Lord, as I open my laptop, which one has in it what is written for this season? And God can open your eyes. The Bible says, listen, is it not amazing that even though the book was open, he still had to find The book was open, but he kept searching until he found the place found the place revelation has location he found the place he found the place lifting has location breakthrough is territorial he found the place where it was written concerning him she found the business that has the grace that is upon her. He found the kind of ministry that would lift him. Listen to me. You are going to pray. Lord, the grace to find the place. The place for my influence. The place, every place is not for you. Lord, where is my place? The grace to Holy <laughs> 
Look at me. Everything that is precious in the spirit is hidden. It's not at plain sight. You can find it through materials. You can find it in men. You can find it in teachings. It is up to you to cry to the God of heaven. The Holy Spirit guides you into all truth. The truth that can fire you to another dimension is hidden somewhere. Listen, I have found things in my life that have become like missing treasures. The Bible says the kingdom is like a treasure that a man found or got missing. And the first thing was that he took a lamb. He lit the room and he carried broom and swept that room thoroughly. Every look and cranny, he swept it until he found the treasure. And when he found that treasure, he had found life. There are things God showed me about the anointing. There are things God showed me about men. There are things God has showed me about the cosmos. You are going to pray again. I don't know. Please try to believe. Some of you, what I'm saying may not make sense to you now. But if it is dominion you want to walk through, you must pray. Lord, let my eyes locate the information that I need in this season for my next level. Open your Let me give us one more prayer point. Jesus takes a man out of a city who is blind. The Bible just calls him a blind man. This is someone with a name, born of a woman, and yet blindness grew to become the capture of his experience. He was named after that condition. Jesus takes that man, spits on the ground, Listen to me. This is a powerful revelation. Do you have the flexibility to allow God to open your eyes the way He wants to? I would not want a man to spit on the ground to open my eyes. Do I have to go through that to see? Many would say, I'd rather be blind. But the man was quiet. There are times that the, the, the level of adaptation and sacrifice it takes to see, it will take God to give you the grace. Are you getting what I'm saying? Now, please follow me. That was not the first time Jesus was opening the eyes of many. There were others. He just laid his hands. There were others. He touched their eyes and said, go and wash him still. And here is a man here 
He comes to Jesus to say, Jesus, let my eyes be open. I'm tired of the limitation that comes with blindness. And then Jesus does not speak the word. He uses saliva. I'm not a medical person, but I know that sometimes if you are fasting or someone, you can have bad breath. Now imagine Jesus spitting on the earth, the level of disdain, all this rigor just to see. Listen, seeing is not cheap. It will take a level of sacrifice and adaptation and even death. There are things you will only see after three months of fasting like you are going to die. It is the price for that sight. I wish I can tell you with one prophetic word or after this service you will just see everything. The prayer is a journey. All lives have prices attached to them. Let me tell you sincerely. It is the truth. All lives liberate but they do not have equal value. There are lights that when you have them, they will make you have others. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Let me give you an instance. You can have light that will bless you in an area and give you great momentum. You can have spiritual light and do well in your spiritual life. You can have light in the area of leadership. But if, for instance, your finance remains grounded, many other things will suffer because of it. So when God gives you light in that area, it is from that light you will find where other areas are missing. So there are certain lights that until you find them, other lights cannot be found. That's why I said all lights don't carry equal value. There are some lights that will give you rest. Are you getting what I'm saying? But follow my story. Jesus speaks on the ground. I'm sure the man is listening. Plum on the ground. And he mixes with dust. And the man is feeling something he rubbed on his eyes. And he's saying, what is this? And Jesus says, you just keep quiet. You are rubbing sand on my eyes. What did I do wrong? The last time I know sand can cause blindness, not open eyes. When sand is in your eyes, you open it for someone to blow it away, no matter how small. Here is the Messiah carrying a lump of sand, mixing it to be wet with saliva, and putting it in your eyes. And he says, now, what do you see? And he said, I've started seeing. But I'm not seeing it. Listen. I've started working in the anointing after the rigo and the sacrifice. God can give you an instruction and say for the next two months, 50% of everything you earn, give it away. And you say, Lord, for what? He said, that's the price to lead you into where you will, you will have the open eyes that will make you see for wealth. And he said, God, no, I'm not stupid. I can't work hard and give 50%. Do you have the flexibility to bend that far? See you is not cheap. When the man got up, now listen, because many of us are here, he started seeing, but he was not seeing well. And then he touched his eyes. And he says, I now see clearly. You are going to pray. Lord, you touched my eyes four years ago to see what I now see. Please touch it again. In this season,
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please allow me to give us one more prayer point. It just came to my heart. I've taught us that, come guys, that there are three levels of the anointing. Please stand here. Don't come here. Watch this, everybody. There is the anointing that is on your life by reason of being a believer. Once you are grafted into Christ, there is a measure of grace and the spirit that is given. Number two, when you find your place in destiny, it doesn't have to be in ministerial office like fivefold. When you find your place, there is always an anointing waiting for you at the place of destiny. It is the anointing that comes with your call, your election, the purpose of God committed to you. Your contribution to kingdom advance has a grace there waiting for you. Watch this. But there is the third level of grace, and this is what I want us to pray. Every season, God is doing something specific. It is costly to think yesterday's grace will suffice for tomorrow. And so you must obtain true discernment, high-level discernment, like the eagle watching the direction of the wind and then it peaks. Other birds are flapping against the tides. But the eagle, the first thing the eagle does is not to fly. The first thing the eagle does is to stand from the mountain top and with precision of vision. It can watch the tides this way, that way, this way, that way. And it flies and catches up with the current, spreads its wings. That's what we call soaring. It does not fly. The eagle soars. Birds fly. They depend on the energy of that mechanics that they go through. There are certain things if you do not know, labor and hardship, even as pertaining your life and your destiny, it will be very clear that the current of God's grace passes you. It's not at work in your life. Watch this. There is now the grace that comes upon your life as a reward for properly discerning what God is doing and plunging out to say like the eagle, Lord, I'm available. In this season, I have discerned that you are looking for kingdom financiers. In this kingdom, I have discerned that you are restoring the healing ministry again to the body. In this season, I have discerned that your pattern of revival has changed. It is not a cyclical pattern, so I cannot study it from history. I will need to learn that move. It's a new dimension that has not come. This is strange, but like Habakkuk, I will stand upon my watch and set myself upon the tower. Let me discern the current. How do you want men to pray in this season? How do you want men to fast? How, can, how must ministry be done like the eagle? For that sacrifice of alignment, there is an anointing that comes on you. And when it comes upon you, the generation will know that you have been selected to stand to represent the purposes of God. Now, there are people who is not backsliding. They are still in the great grand blueprint of God's program. But as far as the unique operation of God perceives it, they are not there. And let me tell you, it's a dangerous thing to be there and yet not be there. It's a dangerous thing to see Canaan and not enter. It's a dangerous thing to once be used. And not because your assignment is over for failing to discern. Someone is going to pray, Lord, I have the grace. I am a believer. Lord, I have found my place in purpose and destiny and I testify with all humility that there is a grace on my office. But I confess, give me the eyes of the people to see what you are doing so that I can obtain the grace for this season. Please lift your hand. Let's 
Listen, by this prayer, hear me. There are some of you, what you need to see cannot be found on earth. So God will have to route it through the realm of the spirit and show you visions of things. John said, I was in the Isle of Patmos for the testimony of God. He was mandated to write the apocalypse, the revelation. And then he needed to be in the spirit on the Lord's day. Then I saw. There are certain things you cannot see in this realm. As occultists, they will tell you. There are certain things, one time, you know, because of the privilege of the apostolic grace and the office and what I do, I study across religions. I read all kinds of things, not to deceive the body, but then to be able to open up my vastness. And so, through the years, I've done it a lot. And I remember one of the sects uh, on earth, I was studying a bit on how they do their initiation. And there is part of the initiation that happens only when you sleep. Then it continues in the realm of the spirit. When it finishes and you wake up, then it will finish. So it starts physically. But there is a part of it that cannot be physical. Isn't it so? Then you will go to bed and it continues in the realm of the spirit. That concerns your soul. Your body is not involved. And then later on, you will finish physically. There are people like that. I remember a dear lady years ago who, I think they went to Kano to see someone. A harpalist, I was told. The man does not come until there is a sacrifice, a true story. And they brought a goat, a physical goat. The goat disappeared in their presence. Not magic, right there. It disappeared. Next thing, a man comes out from nowhere. There are things that cannot be seen in this realm. Please hear me. I'm rounding up. I would lie to you and my conscience will not let me rest if I don't tell you this. I will deceive you if I tell you that everything will be seen only with your optical eyes. There are graces. There are realms you cannot see and you cannot know in this body. Hear me. There are impartations that you cannot receive in the physical. They must happen in the spirit. There are books in the spirit. They are not only books in this realm. John was granted access to see the scrolls in heaven. There are callings that when God calls you, you must be exposed to certain kinds of angels. Listen, you will never be effective if you do not know them and how they operate. Now, theoretically, you will see in the world that they excel in light, they excel in strength. And from the truth of scripture, you can walk. But pragmatically speaking, as there are certain anointings when they come upon you, you must see to be effective. If you cannot see, the grace will not be maximized because the character of the operation of that grace will not only want you to discern, you must see. It has nothing to do with being a prophet. There are anointings that when they are on your life, your dream life must come alive because that is the channel that that grace works. It works through the power of dreams. So I'm not going to deceive you to just say go and buy physical books alone. No. There are times you will need to pray until you plunge into a reality and a dimension. Not divination and some kinds of nonsense. The word of God remains the highest authority. But you can look and the light from scripture enters you. And you find yourself ordained into a dimension. I have told you my story. I have met demons. I have met angels. I know a bit about the realm of the spirit. 
I know a bit about these operations. And it is from the vastness of that knowledge that the dispensing of the grace of God is carried out. When you see me do some of the things that I do, they look easy because it's a product of careful work with the Spirit through many years. But there are many things that happen behind the scenes. If I tell you the power of God is coming on someone, it's not just a guess. No, there are many things that happen. If that revelation is to be broken down, you will be amazed. There are angels that excel in strength, that work with you. What God is doing through koinonia teachings, there is a spiritual dynamics to it. It's not just prayer on something to spread around. No, there is what God is doing. So I, I'm telling you this because you have to be sensitive. There are some of you that would need to pray and say, Lord, even if I cannot see, can you anoint my dreams? Because God will be trying to show you something for a long time. Please listen. And all the channels, don't sing, sang it very well, and the channels of my spirit open up. Like, like a radio station. God may try to give you a call. God may try to send you an email. God may try to do what the channels. Lord, I know that you seek to communicate certain things to me. My spirit man has to be sensitive in this season. There are encounters I have had even in recent times that it may not be profitable now to share. But every time you see new levels in the spirit, please understand with me that something has happened in the spirit. That I can tell you. Are we together? People don't just rise. Levels and dimensions don't just change. Authority does not just come just because people are reading scripture. You see, there are things that happen between you and God that is a prohibition. It's not profitable lest the body builds error out of it. So it is not everything that will come by reading books. It is not everything that will come by listening to messages. There are some of you who will be listening to a koinonia message. Because of the grace that needs to come upon your life, you will be forced to sleep. Whether you are feeling sleepy or not, the grace mandates that your body must be at rest so that your spirit can ascend the level that captures the impartation that comes in that meeting. And you will go to bed and still be participating. You will still be following, but the difference now is that the message will now come with imagery. It's not just you listening again. It will bring you into scenarios and you will receive impartations. Listen, how did Solomon receive the grace for wisdom? He slept and a transaction happened in the realm of the spirit. It's in the Bible. How did Jacob receive that grace? Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray over every one of your people in this auditorium around and following from any part of the world. In the name of Jesus, I pray that by the power of the Holy Spirit, may your eyes be open tonight. blindness that has been casted over your mind, casted over your eyes, so that you will not see that which pertains to your dominion in this season. I stand in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, and I command, let that veil be taken from off your eyes. The light that can turn your night today in the name of Jesus, I expose you to that body of truth. The light it takes to cross the head of evil over your life, over your family, in the name of Jesus, be exposed to that light. The light that must be cast upon your mind in this season to bring to life ideas, concepts, helping you maximize.
light opportunities. I declare may that light fall upon you now. Hear me. I frustrate the ministry of Satan. I decree and declare that every veil he may seek to cast upon your mind. May that assignment be thwarted now. The anointing that has been looking for you from the beginning of this year, by the power of light, I connect you to it. In the name of Jesus Christ. I sanctify every spiritual channel that God can use to communicate truth to you. From your dreams, to visions, to perceptions, I anoint them, may they work for you in the name of Jesus. Every angel assigned in this season to your life to help guide like Daniel, working in partnership with the Holy Spirit, to provide for understanding. May they excel in strength. May they excel in light. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hear me. Whatever has kept you at the same position, in the name of Jesus Christ, the God of heaven, by the power of light in this season, I move you to the next level of your destiny. In the name of Jesus. Finally, let me pray for your loved ones and all who are connected to you. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, by the power of sight, by the power of light and illumination, sustain the authority to liberate your loved ones. In the name of Jesus Christ. And I pray for everyone here, every dormant gift, Every ability of the spirit that is lying quietly but has not yet been tapped to be profitably used for kingdom advance and for your listening, I declare a quickening of those gifts now. The appetite to study scripture in the name of Jesus, the appetite to listen to materials that can bless you. To study books, that mental inertia that wants to cripple your growth and dominion, I crush it now in the name of Jesus. Finally, I pray for you. The result that must happen in this season to motivate you. Because you see, we are motivated in this kingdom by the workings of the principles that we engage. When you engage truth and it works, then you are motivated to explore more. I pray for you. The result needed in this season that will move you and motivate you to higher realms in the spirit, may that result begin to speak in your life. Finally, I pray for you. The anointing that is corporately released upon this house in this season to bring men into realms of light and illumination. In the name of Jesus, I connect you to that grace. In the name of Jesus, I connect you to that grace. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In the mighty name of Jesus. Please listen, I gave us... Um, three books to read. There is a reason why I gave you these books. I, I want to encourage us heed to instructions. Instructions are for our profiting. Um, if, you do, if you do not have it, especially for our family uh, in other regions, please do well to get it. I gave us three books to read. Number one, The Final Quest, Rick Joyner. Number two, um, divine revelation of the spirit realm. Not heaven, not hell, not angels, the spirit realm. Mary Kay Baxter. And then number three, rediscovering the kingdom. Um, Miles Munro. Please get these books. You can get the, uh, the soft copies. Listen to them. Don't just get the one hour summary online. Read the books. Discipline yourself. Praise the Lord. We are on a journey in the spirit and God is taking us very far. 
Father, we bless you for tonight. Let the name of the Lord be glorified. In the name of Jesus. Keep praying. Keep praying. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I want to start tonight by appreciating us for the sacrifice of fasting. There is no gift of fasting. Hallelujah. There's no such thing in the Bible as the gift of fasting. Fasting has always been a sacrifice. So it's not, there's, there's no such, it's not, it's, not, it's not anything unusual when you are tired. There is no gift of fasting. Fasting is not abstinence from food. Fasting is abstinence from food to seek the Lord. If you are not seeking the Lord, you are not fasting. Hallelujah. Most times, people just stay away from food and go around gisting, sleeping, gossiping, allowing the devil to use them. That's not fasting. Fasting is abstaining from food to seek. The seeking part is the difference between fasting and just maybe some sort of diet control or whatever it is. Are we together now? The idea is not to starve yourself you see you have to understand this the idea is not starvation it was on account of food a man gave away his destiny he says i prefer to eat than to have my destiny what is it in my destiny let me exchange that destiny for food called esau in the bible he was not clothes he said i am so hungry to hell with my destiny Bring me that pottage of red steel. And his destiny went away. Many people laugh at Esau. But that's what we do all our lives. We allow food to take away the place of an encounter that can change your life forever. There is no one on earth I know. No one who truly works in authentic power with God. Who does not fast? Not just as a ritual. What food is to your sustenance is what fasting is to your spiritual growth. Nobody outgrows food. Nobody. You can't say I've been eating for 40 years. Are we together now? So I need us to be at the same pace so that we don't think it's just a starvation. Remember in the book of Acts 23, don't turn there, there were certain people who went to consult diviners on what to do with Paul and the Bible says they bound themselves with a curse and they said we will neither eat nor drink until Paul dies. Fasting so that an anointed man of God can die. Are we together now? So we need to understand that this that God is doing is to empower us so that we can rise in life. It's a sacrifice that God has designed for our lifting. Even Jesus himself fasted and Jesus was teaching and said, when you fast, not if you fast. And when God declares a corporate fast, there are individual fasts, but there is a corporate fast. That is a commanded fast. Is this not the kind of fast I have commanded? You can do the one you want to do, but when God commands it, it's because there is something that he has in mind. Hallelujah. God bless you. Please be seated for a while. Just pray one prayer. Lord Jesus, open my eyes. Open my eyes to the understanding of your word. Open my eyes. Please pray. Make sure you are praying. Open my eyes. Open my eyes. Oh, oh.
chapter 19 tonight i'm sharing on the power of knowledge the power of knowledge luke chapter 19 in the new testament jesus cried twice the first reason why he cried listen carefully the first reason why jesus cried was when he was weeping at lazarus's grave and the bible records that oh how he loved him so love was one of the first reasons why jesus cried the second reason why he cried is found in luke chapter 19 from verse 41 luke chapter 19 luke chapter 19 blessed be the name of the lord luke chapter 19 verse 41 and when he was come near he beheld the city listen carefully and wept over it saying if thou hast known even thou at least in this thy day the things which belong unto thy peace he says but they are hidden from thy eyes jesus stood over a city and was weeping he was watching the way the people were guessing their lives and jesus your jesus started crying and his reason for crying is that if you had known the things that are responsible for your peace responsible for your peace not just the quietness responsible for your results jesus stood and was crying and his, his purpose of crying was the ignorance of the people in that city and the inevitable fact that they would continue to be victims of that ignorance he says you do not know the things that belong for your peace he says but now they are hidden from your eyes meaning that although you are looking you cannot see them this kingdom we have been drumming it from day one of this fast that this kingdom is a kingdom of information is a kingdom of light dominion in this kingdom is a product of knowledge not desire knowledge not intention knowledge hallelujah dominion in this kingdom is not just based on knowledge but based on sufficient knowledge having knowledge is not enough when a student goes to write exams the student is not writing another subject if he gets seven over hundred is that true he failed 93 percent and passed seven percent but the seven percent is not enough to pass the student so having knowledge is not enough there is a level of knowledge it takes for dominion to be true if the light goes off right now and you light a matchbox it is light but it is not sufficient enough to turn the night in this auditorium today so saying you have knowledge is not enough the knowledge must be sufficient to a degree that can bring you the result you desire the problem for many of us is not necessarily ignorance it is insufficient knowledge is God speaking to us we need deep enough knowledge not just knowledge deep enough knowledge about finances deep enough knowledge about divine health deep enough knowledge about the anointing deep enough knowledge about church growth deep enough knowledge about increase having knowledge is not enough it is true that we know some things but the challenge is those things may not hold all the keys that are required to command the results that we desire let me show you a verse that i found very very interesting first corinthians chapter 8 and verse 2 this blessed me in no small way first corinthians chapter 8 and verse 2 it says and if any man think that he knoweth anything he knoweth nothing yet as he ought to that means the proof that you are knowledgeable is that there is a desire in you for more 
that the moment there is a point in your life where you believe that you know enough the apostle is speaking that by the spirit that a sense of arrival and complacency is a symptom of insufficient knowledge Sinat sang that the more I know you, the more I want to know you. So when you encounter God, when you encounter the spirit of knowledge and revelation, the sign is that although you are working in great results, there remain a hunger in you for more. I am passionate about knowing the areas of ignorance in my life because there is so much I do not know. Are we together? Everything we desire in the kingdom is available. The grace of God has made it available. But it takes knowledge. Not just faith. Faith must be upon an, a person and an information that is correct. You can have faith in error. You can have faith in an information that is not correct. So it's not just having faith. The object of your faith must be authentic. You need a high level of insight and light. A high level of insight. A high level of light. Are we together? Scattered in this auditorium and all around and all those following us from the nations of the world. The reason, listen carefully. The reason why we have requests, why we have desires, is because there are expectations before us that are not yet our testimonies. There are expectations before us. There are things we desire. Some of you are here tonight trusting God for superior dimensions of the anointing. Some of you here are pastors. You are struggling with membership up today down tomorrow. And it's not that you are not anointed. But not to the degree to get the results you desire. There are people who are trusting God for certain levels of graces. But you see the thing is not just to say I have knowledge. Is it to the degree... That can give you the result. I always liken knowledge. I also liken the anointing to money. If I want to take this. This bottle of water. And it is 100 naira. If I have 70 naira. I have money. But not the value enough to purchase this. This is what I am looking for. So I must upgrade that value to the level. That it can deliver this result. Are we together? Knowledge. Hosea chapter 4 and verse 6, the prophet of God was speaking by the Spirit. And he said, my people. He never said the hidden, my people. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Satan manipulated their understanding to make them see life from a perspective. And the result of that aberration is the pain and the discomfort that they have. Knowledge. The Bible says, through knowledge shall the just be delivered. There is a relationship between knowledge and deliverance, not just prayer. I told you that not all spirits go by prayer. The Bible never said so. This kind, there is a kind that goes by prayer. There is a kind that goes by prayer and fasting. There is a kind that goes by knowledge. The devourer does not go by fasting. The devourer does not go by knowledge. The devourer goes by obedience to a, obedience to a correct information. Are we together? I believe in fasting. I believe in prayer. That's what we are doing now. But I will be lying to you. Many believers keep mocking themselves. Thinking just because you are praying and dissipating energy. It will cover for every spiritual predicament. No sir. At best, God will take advantage of your alignment in prayer to lead you back to an information that is able to help you. In this kingdom, we reign on the strength of the light that we have. John chapter 1 and verse 5 says, The light shineth in darkness. The light shineth in darkness. The light shineth in darkness and the darkness comprehended it not. For as long as it is night time in your life, weeping continues. The Bible says weeping endureth for the night. You don't stop crying just because you are tired of crying. You stop crying because light enough to turn your night to day. We are calling this place night now simply because something has happened to the sun in as much as we know. And we are not able to receive that illumination sufficient enough 
to turn the night to day. But a few hours now into the morning, everything is going to change. We rise in this kingdom by light, not desire. I desire prosperity is not enough to give you. I desire to walk in divine health. I desire for that hepatitis to go. I desire for that cancer to go. I desire for that HIV, that fibroid to leave my body. I desire for that barren womb to take in. It takes knowledge. It takes knowledge, not just desire. Hallelujah. You hear the testimonies of the people who God is granting them grace. Don't you think God just chose to bless them now? It is now the knowledge has come to them. And so it makes it look like this is the season God has wanted to bless you. He's always wanted to do it. But you only arise and shine when your light comes. Not when it's available. It has always been available. But the day it comes to you. Every lady's womb in this auditorium can take seed. But it doesn't make you pregnant automatically. The day a real seed enters that womb, then the process of conception starts. Are we together? But as you are now seated, that womb can produce. So it's not enough to just say, I have potentials. I know what can happen. No. If God wants to change your life, He grants you knowledge. Every religion that oppresses men in the world thrives through mysticism and ignorance. The strength of victimization and oppression is withholding classified information from people. The difference between the intelligence unit of the American nation and other nations of the world is their access to classified information. There is a kind of information that is not given to the third world nations to know. It is only supplied to them if they go and plead with the intelligence unit and then they give them terms. Is that true? As terrible as terrorism is on earth, right from space, there is a system of watching on earth, real time. But that information will not be given to you is the privilege of the holders of that information. That's why they are called world powers. They are not called world powers because they are bigger. They are called world powers because they have access to classified information. So we reign in this kingdom. Not just because of how macho we are. Not just because of how fluent we are. But the access to the information. The Bible says Jesus himself knew what to do. That's dominion. To know what to do. Good master, what must I do to be saved? In other words, I want to be saved, but it's not yet my experience. And I know that the bridge between me and that result is knowledge. Good master, what must I do? Not just that I desire to be saved. Good master, what must I do to be blessed financially? What must I do to be lifted? What must I do to rise to a realm where my body no longer hosts sickness? I shared with us a revelation, I don't know which of the days, that the Bible says when a spirit leaves a man, remember? A spirit does not leave a man on his own. It is casted. Is that true? Out of that person. In my name ye shall cast out devils. They don't want to go. But an anointing compels them to leave. And then the Bible says they go through desert regions. Listen carefully. And something about the desert does something to that spirit. And without any prayer warrior praying, the spirit leaves the desert and prefers to come back to the man. Hmm. The desert. That something can happen in a desert. No prayer meeting going on. No fasting going on. A spirit can be so uncomfortable in the desert. And it will rather return back to the man. That means there is something the body of man can become. That can make spirits. Even without any man praying. They will leave. And that mystery you see in the desert. Is what the Bible calls the mystery of fire. This fire you see. Is a mystery. There is something about the heat of the desert physically that does something to spirits and they prefer. That's why when Jesus casted them, they entered the swine straight into the water. 
straight into the water and the people drove him and said leave this place when a spirit leaves a man there is something about the habitation of a mortal man that is conducive for a spirit and the moment it leaves it it goes through desert regions and something happens not compatible to their design and he says i have to leave this area of hostility so the bible says he maketh his angels winds and his ministers flames of fire that when a man becomes a flame of fire no spirit no charm no no cause by themselves you will have a dream and watch certain things leave you the first thing that happened to samson they bound his hand and the bible says when the hand of the lord came upon him suddenly heat from nowhere turned that thing the bible says he was like flax and all of a sudden he let it go are we together we must be deeply passionate about spiritual knowledge not useless knowledge there are all kinds of knowledge on earth occultism can give you knowledge about the spirit realm that's why jesus said i am the door the authorized system for routing this knowledge you can read all kinds of books online and that's why we have to be careful especially for we young people because in our appetite to chase knowledge we have found ourselves dabbling into occultic there are books that moses wrote but those books are occultic books your real moses he wrote those books before he encountered god he wrote them as a very good student who was trained in egypt today they use those books for occultism he teaches you geometry how to align yourself to certain angles on the earth that will make you be in touch with the constellations moses taught it so when we talk of knowledge we are not just talking of a random pursuit of anything that is spiritual in this day and age where we measure respect for ministry by how much what we supposedly call debt we must be careful the proof of knowledge is the deliverance that it brings that's why many people keep growing supposedly in revelation and with all that rema the devil oppresses you as if that he's telling you i'm not aware whatever it is you are celebrating i'm not aware true knowledge liberate we pride ourselves with useless knowledge that is incapable of standing the test of time and bringing the victory that we desire stood over the city and wept and said you do not know the things that belong for your peace hallelujah let me show you something psalms 45 and verse 4 psalm 45 thank you jesus it says and in thy majesty right prosperously because of what truth not just meekness not just all of these things and thy right hand shall teach thee terrible things right prosperously not because of desire because of truth he says and ye shall know the truth and if it is really the truth you can know what you think is the truth you can know what a pastor tells you is the truth you can know what a denomination tells you is the truth but if it is really the truth the bible says it makes men free there are supposed truths in the body of christ that don't make men free ever learning but never coming to the knowledge of the truth acquiring things that puff us up knowledge that puffs up doesn't heal doesn't deliver doesn't bless doesn't make people closer to god There is power in knowledge. There is power in knowledge. There is power when knowledge is applied. We reign in this kingdom by the mysteries that we know. But the manifestation, the potency of those truths are brought to the scene when we act. The first thing to do is to get knowledge, not to act. The first thing to do is to build conviction. 
through the requisite knowledge that will bring you the result this bible you see is a compendium of all kinds of knowledge that scatter across different subject matters so the assignment of the believer is to walk as though you are walking through a garden and find the details that are responsible in this book is the knowledge that will take anybody from a failure to a success it's true in this book your assignment is to walk with the spirit of god are we together to be able to piece together all the required information not some not as much as you want all the required information in this world there is a system where men can walk in divine health it is true it is true now if your experience has not captured that reality it does not mean the word of god lied it is that you have not been able to construct in your spirit and your mind all the keys that are required to produce that outcome you can give me the ingredients to make fried rice and miss one important ingredient and what i will produce will not be called fried rice yes rice but not fried rice the difference between jollof rice and fried rice is combination rice is there in all of them are we together now yes there's a lot of ignorance in the body of christ there is a lot of cramming scripture there is a lot of quoting scripture there is a lot of devotionals there are a lot of translations of the bible there are so many books but there is very little knowledge that is required because if that knowledge translates to wisdom it will be justified by the children that it will produce hallelujah i don't want the kind of knowledge that puffs me up into pride you know knowledge can do something to you if you are not careful it can bring you to a sense of pride open to john chapter 4 verse you just ah he's going to verse 17 but the person who is talking there is not spiritual he's not god fearing he's under oppression he's sick as he's talking there and broke on top yet the person is telling you i know you are going to verse 17 that's ex the exact kind of knowledge Satan needs. So he, he deceives you into being convinced that you are also a colleague in the realm of results. Whereas your life is not producing anything. I know everything about getting people filled with the Holy Ghost. I can go to Acts chapter 1. Yes, I know Isaiah 28. I know Joel chapter 2. Here is a gentleman in need of the baptism. And you stand and struggle around there and create all kinds of flimsy excuses. I know what the Bible says concerning prosperity. Oh, Malachi chapter 3, bring ye all the tithes. Oh, you know, Luke chapter 6, I know for my sake he became poor. Show me the result. Show me in your mind and show me in your life. How God anointed Jesus, is it that one? I know it. I, I can even tell you the amplified version. And we think that just because we gather those things, we have knowledge. No, sir. No, sir. We must be passionate about knowledge. Just because they made you a Bible study leader in your church does not mean you are knowledgeable. You are just the one who is representing the church. And that's wonderful. Continue doing what you are doing. But if it is results you are looking for, you have to go back. It's not a Bible study manual that makes you knowledgeable. Demons don't have respect for those things. I'm not against them. But I'm saying much more than those things, you have to go and sit down. Martha was running up and down. He said, Martha, Martha, you were worried and, and, and um, offended about many things. He said, one thing is needful, to sit down at the master's feet. Lord, what is this secret to favor? What is it? Not, I know there is favor. Most of the results we want, we believe it exists. But how to make it our experience is where the challenge is. And that's one of the benefits of fasting. Ultimately, your faith rises. But the Bible says, the kind of fast I have commanded, your light will break forth. There is something about the supremacy that your spirit man will gain over your flesh. Because your flesh has been starved of food. 
and the strength of the flesh is the availability of food when the flesh is energetic it runs around and plays games but when there is the absence of food it has a way of forcing suppression to your flesh and then your spirit man can hear and understand then shall your light break forth shall your light break forth and your health speedily your health physical health hallelujah only if that our loved ones knew certain truths look at me look at all of us now in this place brothers and sisters look at the knowledge that god has granted us access to imagine what have you had certain revelations and immediately you almost start crying because you wish somebody you love so much think how many times you watch sincere people sincere christians become victims of the oppression of darkness through knowledge shall the just be delivered it takes knowledge to prosper it doesn't just take god to prosper it takes knowledge it takes knowledge to walk in the anointing there must be a desperate desire in your heart and my heart to pant after knowledge to pant after truth he said i'd rather be a doorkeeper in your house i know that that place is bethel the place of bread where there is knowledge i rather be than to go around celebrating please hear me those who are standing by the roadside and inside all the overflows right where you are standing the difference between you and any man you admire whether in business in ministry in 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 finances family life whatever it is is knowledge when a man fights with his wife and beats his wife it's not just the presence of demons the demons don't just act anyhow the demons take advantage of the ignorance are we together demons don't just act they don't just veto your will and act they take advantage of the gap in knowledge or the incompleteness of your knowledge and then they take advantage of it it is more dangerous to have incomplete knowledge it's better to have complete ignorance because the days of our ignorance god overlooks god can overlook certain things like you see a little child doing certain things and you are aware that that child does not have an ability to have that knowledge at that level and so you forbear if a small child comes and is rolling here now and playing around we may just guide the child in love but not to flog the child because at that level we expect that to happen but if as an adult you come and you are doing it we will first find out whether it's the holy ghost making you do it and if we find out it's not the one we will send you away and we'll say no 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 you don't do this there is order in the house of god are we together if you say you have been born again that you are in christ you have access to the spirit of god then certain things should be seen in your life that validates the fact that you are walking with the word that validates the fact that you are not just reading your bible in the morning just as a ritual to say be a witness you see me doing my devotion today that's not knowledge it can be religion in fact most times it is religion open down my eyes that i may behold wondrous things open down my eyes open down my eyes he said call on to me and i will answer and i will show you not tell you show you great and mighty things that you do not know great and mighty things great and mighty dimensions of the anointing that you do not know great and mighty dimensions of influence that you do not know let me tell you this anybody in your life you see with sustainable results in any area do not make a mistake of thinking it is luck are we together now there is no luck in this equation when you see a mother train 11 children and for 30 years those children have remained in a way a manner 
that even shocks you don't just say come madam you are lucky or what kind of anointing is on you no it's not just the anointing god can give you the same anointing on that woman and you'll be able to train one child with it that anointing functions well through knowledge knowledge gives the anointing efficiency knowledge gives the anointing efficiency the anointing does not just work anyhow knowledge gives the anointing efficiency otherwise there would not be need for the renewal of the mind knowledge gives the anointing efficiency you are still anointed but he said let this mind be in you which was in christ jesus hallelujah have you seen a man maybe an old elderly man that didn't have the privilege to go to school didn't have the privilege to learn english but a greatly anointed man you can see that that man utilized less than on a scale of one to ten less than four of that anointing take that same anointing don't change it the same anointing put it on another young man who is more knowledgeable and more vast in scripture that's when you will see the true potential of what that anointing could do that means that old man's lack of knowledge limited the operation of the anointing that's what happened to some of our parents the old people who were prophets they loved god they had dangerous prophetic graces but there was no accurate understanding of the word so the dispensing of their prophetic looks so limited but then you take the same prophetic anointing and you put on someone who is mighty in scripture and you see the kind of miracles and deliverances that will come for people knowledge is important in this kingdom you pay for your ignorance it will not be paid for you will pay for it in this kingdom you will pay for your ignorance you will pay for it in sickness you will pay for it in untimely death you will pay for it in lack of joy you will pay for it in sorrow you will pay for it in all kinds of diseases darkness continues to multiply but it takes those who have light light sufficient to keep the kind of results they desire is god speaking to us we are going to pray but the cry is for knowledge for knowledge for knowledge for knowledge lord give me knowledge why is our family like this we are 20 in the, the entire family but nobody rises you know i watch how i talk to people many times sometimes here on the queue and then around as i travel and they meet me and communicate certain challenges and in all honesty and with all humility i know what they are doing wrong that is responsible for that and i know what they need to do to get the result and then they say apostle pray for me i know just a touch from you as soon as you touch me everything will go and it is true that they can get some measure of results but ultimately they need to sit down and that spiritual laziness they just say that's why we love the prophetic so much not necessarily because we appreciate it that it's from god it looks like an easy remedy and an alternative to sitting down and knowing god so we love it just tell me this business trip will i make it or not i don't want to hear any story though i don't need to learn how to talk to the people if not, i just tell me just tell me this lady i'm going to marry is my morning clear is my afternoon clear is my evening clear or whatever it is but sir there are principles to work with women i don't care just tell me god should be able to know our refusal to get knowledge has equated to the strength of satan in our lives he looked mighty because our ignorance gave him the ladder to climb that high are you hearing what i'm saying let me say it again that satan looks mighty in our lives because our ignorance provided the ladder for him to climb and look so mighty but when you get knowledge brothers and sisters in my little life i've seen the power of knowledge when knowledge is correct and it is applied to the letter that's when you will see how cheap satan is savior he can move a mountain my god is mighty to say he is mighty to say forever author of salvation he rose and conquered the grave jesus conquered the grave savior savior he can move a mountain my god is mighty to save he is mighty to save forever author of salvation he rose and conquered the 
Once upon a time, I'm looking for him. Where is he? Doctor, come. I thought he was there. Do you know once upon a time, this gentleman was a naive young gentleman with a desire to become the future of himself. Is that true? He saw an expectation. But he was a naive gentleman. And all that happened to him in the medical school, they didn't change his clothes. They didn't change his name. They only kept supplying knowledge. When the knowledge was enough, they took him higher. Enough, they took him higher. Enough, they took him higher. One day, someone who was a master in that field looked at him and said, based on the knowledge you have, you deserve a certification to go and practice as a doctor. The difference, as anointed as I am, the difference between me and this guy, if someone is convulsing, I will pray for him because I don't know what else to do. Is that true? All I know in my world is that all wickedness and evil is from Satan. And so that's exactly what I'll do. Because that's my knowledge. And I will watch somebody who is sick, having typhoid fever, and I'm shaking around, and here comes. He already knows that this one, if it can be attended to, it does not kill. So while the mother, he says, hey, help my son. The doctor says, all right. Knowledge gives you stability. Stability. Fear is a revelation that there is a gap in knowledge. Panicking over everything. You just hear something on your zing. Hey, they are here again, just like they said, because there's something you do not know. Are we together now? Yes. You can see him stand. And while he's performing whatever he's doing, his whole medical activity, someone else is there watching and, and panicking. And he says, don't worry. And two days, he just prescribes a drug. Oh, are you doing this? Are you coughing? Are you vomiting? Oh, I see. And the person says, help me. Oh. And the person goes to bed and wakes up the next day as if it's a lie. And says, doctor, I'm fine. Knowledge. Knowledge. Is that true? That means there is something you can know that will make you go to bed and wake up the next day in shock and surprise. There's something you can know about favor. The, the, I believe that all of these miracle alerts and all of this, they are, they are a statement. I told you that a sign is a miracle with a message in it. God is saying, this is how easy I can change your life if you believe me. You see the people coming to testify, they are even shy. They are surprised themselves. Because it's no respecter of persons. Are we together? Tonight we are going to pray. And I'm going to pray for the sick very fast. Very fast. We can't continue like this. Tomorrow we may not. It's a miracle service. But I don't know if we'll have time to pray for the sick. Because tomorrow God is going to tear the heavens over this place. Aye. Hallelujah. The anointing oil is already... I mean, they carried it out. When I saw the jar coming, I said, please come. <laughs> oh, come, oh, come. Together we will we'll cry and speak every kind of mystery. <laughs> ah! When the woman was saying, there is nothing in my house, the anointing was hearing the conversation. And said, so you are ignoring me. You gathered me among non-living things and said, you don't have anything. He said, change the vessel and see what I can do. The anointing was hearing the conversation. Are you not told that you have an anointing that can teach? In English, when things move, uh, when things move, uh, living things, biology, everything, you said you, you personify things by giving them life and attributes of humans. The oil is a dead thing. It is the anointing that makes the oil alive. The anointing makes anything alive, including a rod that was dead. Are we together? So tonight we are going to pray. Listen to me. Let me just give you one truth. Sit down please. Just one. Can I talk about sickness for just five minutes? Look at me. What is it with Satan and sickness and diseases? Please listen. I know that there may be a number of people sitting now trusting God for healing. What if I go to the hospital right now? Don't feel bad not talking against you. That's why the power of God is here. If they look at me now. And doctor diagnoses me and says, young man, 
I just found out that there is a heart palpitation or there is a hole in your heart or there is a tumor in your brain, correct? Or there is a fibroid somewhere, some kind of malignant growth blocking your tubes or whatever. What exactly is Satan achieving with this? What is it with Satan and the bodies of men? What is he looking for? I will tell you. If you don't know this, you will not see the need for the healing ministry. The healing ministry is not just a validation that a man is anointed. There are many other ways to validate that a man is anointed. Jesus was very ruthless about healing. The healing ministry is not just some showmanship of testimony to show that a man is a good evangelist or apostle or prophet or whatever. No. You see, remember our, our teaching on the, the serpent, the seed, right? the serpent and the woman that satan knows that there is a law right it's called the law of territory that you can only be allowed to stay in a territory if you have the requisite demands of that territory i give you an instance if i throw you inside water now you may be able to swim but not forever because that is not your habitation of existence so your design was not made that way but if i throw a fish a fish can stay there forever a man can fly in the air but not indefinite he has to come down even if the plane does not spoil something will happen to his health that pressure gradient will affect him eventually are we together now so we now see that on earth as a human being god's system for functioning on earth is that your spirit must have a body that was built before it becomes legal are we together so if there is no body your spirit is an illegal occupant it may not be legal in the realm of the spirit and in other dimensions of the heavens but on the earth your body your spirit must be hosted in a material body god himself respected this law when he was about to come to the earth a body has thou prepared for me not a spirit the spirit is still the real me but a body had to be prepared are we together now and so christ could come into that body mary's womb did not produce the word of god mary's womb produced a coat a physical body children are a heritage from the lord but they need a body is that true they need a body so here's what satan knows that for as long as there are many bodies it means that there are many spirits that can be hosted in those bodies that have wills and can choose to serve god and can choose to advance the kingdom are you seeing the conspiracy of darkness in trying to create the system of clothing and the rest as wonderful as they are eventually they are antichrist systems in an attempt to to clone different bodies so that these demons remember the demons we have been talking about i hope you know those demons are still looking for bodies till today so they are coming up with a system to make robots and educate the robots to be so intelligent but without spirit so that a demon spirit can come into it there are films like that you watch them where scientists try to make all kinds of robots then they invoke through a central machine a spirit is not acting that's satan's agenda but meanwhile there is a level of health that your body must assume for your spirit to safely stay there you know your body is a house god said it is a temple demon said it is a house so we know that both god and satan agree that this body is a house are we together now and so satan tries to inflict all kinds of damages there is a damage that can happen to my body it will break the body so much the spirit will be will have to leave we call that death a separation are we together every sickness is the first step towards death every if i am sick i am closer to death being sick than i am alive so the ultimate goal of sickness is not to bring you down so you'll be fine tomorrow the ultimate goal of sickness is to start initiating the process of death in your life in hope that it will continue that's why doctors are a real blessing those who work in the anointing hate doctors we love doctors here we have a lot of them because we realize that it would take more than a man of god 
this damage that has been done by hell will require people who keep standing because even the doctors themselves believe in miracles they don't talk to the drugs they just administer it the drug itself the system of its operation is a mystery that only god can tell so medicine itself is a miracle if you go to the hospital you attended a miracle service because something in that hospital is beyond the knowledge of the doctor are we together so satan wants to afflict me imagine that i came up now and i'm coughing i'm coughing blood think of what it would do to your faith one two think of what it would do to the to kingdom advance are we together think of what it would do so satan wants it it's a statement god you are not you are not all that you say and i'm using your highest creation to mock you the healing ministry proves the lordship of jesus in a very significant way the healing ministry does not just prove the strength of the man of god it's a testament of the dominion power of god doctors understand this the next time you are injecting somebody don't just say are you recovering expect something to flow through your contact with that syringe into the person that accelerates the process so tonight hear me if there is any sickness in your body it's a sign that satan desires to kill you it's not a sign that what he, he desires is proof it is the first stage to begin to deteriorate you there are people who are sick but you go to the hospital and they tell you there is nothing wrong that's satan for you a few days ago a lady brought me brought me um a photo of someone i think she's here just a little boy aged me little boy on the leg and within months this had rotten if, if they turn the other leg you see the bones physical bones the flesh had eaten is that a boy is that how you know that boils work another life attaching itself to your body behold i give you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and all the powers of the enemy he says and nothing shall by any means hurt you how god anointed jesus of nazareth chapter 10 verse 38 with the holy ghost and with power he went about doing good healing all they that were sick oppressed sickness is an oppression if you accommodated the devil will kill you with that sickness everywhere jesus saw sick people and they were serious enough about their healing think of what happened to the woman with the issue of blood imagine you were the one that married her and she was your wife 12 years of pain watching your wife every day and here comes jesus imagine the woman who had been bound for 18 years imagine what would happen to her family life the healing ministry is an end time ministry it's not for healing evangelists it's not for apostles it's part of the tools that make us demonstrators of the reality of the life and power of god the power of god must be demonstrated upon his highest creation not just plants and animals and tonight in the name of jesus christ i'm trusting the lord that there are people here who will wave goodbye do you know what god is going to do god is going to turn your own body into a volcano and no devil no spirit the same way they leave deserts in peace that's how they will have to walk out of your body in peace hallelujah you have won the victory hallelujah Hallelujah, you have won it all for me. That could not hold you down. You are the reason king. Three.
position of your area of ignorance. Lord, reveal to me what do I need to know? What do I need to know to take me to the next dimension? In the name of Jesus, lift your voice and begin to pray everywhere. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Expose my area of ignorance. Expose my area of ignorance. Expose my area of ignorance. Expose Hallelujah. I'd like you to prophesy to yourself and say every area of my life where Satan has taken advantage of me by the power of knowledge, I declare that your victory in that area is broken. Lift your voice and pray. Every area may be your finances, may be your spiritual life, may be the area of growth, may be your ministry, every area where I have an answer. Say in the name of Jesus. One more time in the name of Jesus. Father. Open my eyes to the revelations required for the results I desire. Say it again, Father. Open my eyes to the revelation of the truth, the information that are required for the results that I desire. Open your mouth and pray. Every result has a demand. Every result has a life requirement. Every result I have. There is something I must know. There is something I must do. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. One of the benefits, listen to me, of the word of God is that it can be sent on error. He said he sent forth his word like a messenger. And he says his word he left them. Listen carefully. He sent forth his word. He sent it. He didn't speak it. He didn't say he spoke forth. He sent forth. 
his word i can be talking to you but i can say go and help me do something he sent forth his word and his word he let them and delivered them from all their destruction please let me tell you something we are just going to pray one prayer and i'm going to pray for the sick demons are responsible for infirmities don't confuse it are we together now there are families tied down with all kinds of plagues patterns father stroke mother stroke firstborn stroke first lady daughter stroke what kind of devil is that i'd like you to lift your voice in one minute and tell the lord what must live your life this night the anointing to make you go is available. Lord, Hallelujah. You must believe this. You are barren here tonight. You must be ready to take him now. You don't take it when you meet your husband. Meeting your husband gives the baby a body. You take it when the word of God gets to you. Be it unto me. Joseph was not there. agree with God for God's sake tonight and frustrate certain medical reports that only God, only God can take away. Are we together now? Lord, I'm ready to receive my healing. Open your mouth and Oh, Now listen My God, there is such an anointing I'm going to pray Just just go guys, not that sound Please change all those things Play the strings for me Praise the Lord Now we are going to pray You have I'm going to minister the true power of Jesus. We may take some instant testimonies here. There's no time to call people out. We do that during the miracle services because we want to be torn on everybody. But scattered across overflow, one, two, three, those online, wherever you are, the healing power of Jesus is able to touch you wherever you are. Are we together? Now I'm going to be praying for you. As I pray for you and the power of God touches you, there are some of you you will be surprised at what will happen to you right now. While we finish praying, I'm going to give you an opportunity to check yourself. Now listen please. Usher's protocol, just coordinate so we don't have people roaming around. The moment you find out that the power of God has touched you, are we together? I want you to make your way to the front. Let there be people at, at different points, the station. And we'll have a way of receiving some of them here. Jimmy, you help me. And then we'll see how we can take a few testimonies to disgrace the devil tonight. We may not be able to take all. But tonight, we want to give room to the God that can step in and rubbish the works of Satan. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? This is very, very important. I want to pray for you now. Already people have been healed. Some of you, as you came, you found out. Don't be afraid. I'm going to pray for you. Bring the lady that the angel of the Lord is going to touch outside with a loud shout. Bring her. 
Alaba Kusidia. Just let me do my thing now. I'm ministering by the spirit of prophecy. I'm going to pray for the sick. Please let me have that lady quickly. I want to pray for her. It's a sign that God is giving to pray for the sick. We see the rain of your love. We feel the wind of your spirit. Now the heartbeat of heaven. Let us hear you. I feel the rain of your love. I feel the wind of your spirit. Now the heartbeat of heaven. Let us hear you. So let it be. Jesus Christ. You see, God does these things. You know that this is a ministry of signs and wonders and God does these things as a message. Praise the Lord. The Lord is setting this lady's family free. I see oppression. I command that spirit. It's time to go. Let her go in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. And for you, I take this that the devil has put in your stomach. In the name of Jesus every planting that is not of the lord in the name of jesus it leaves now lay one hand where you are trusting god for healing quickly lay one hand where you are trusting god for healing if it's a part of your body you cannot touch just make contact with your chest inside and outside please expect a miracle right now expect a miracle right now in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. My God. In the name of Jesus Christ. I take authority over the spirit of insanity. In the name of Jesus. I command every devil of sickness. Every devil of sickness come out of their bodies now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Every spirit of insanity. I take authority over you right now. I take authority over you right now. Every spirit of insanity within this vicinity, I take authority over you in the name of Jesus. Every spirit of insanity in their life by covenant, in their life by disobedience, in their life by ignorance, I take authority over you right now. Right now I declare be healed in the name of Jesus. I send the healing power of Jesus like a drug into your body. I command cleansing right now in the name of Jesus. I command healing right now in the name of Jesus. I command healing in the name of Jesus. Something is happening to you. A chest condition is being healed right now. In the name of Jesus. Several chest conditions. As a matter of fact, right now, something is leaving your chest. You will feel like fire just going like this and you are healed in the name of Jesus Christ I see an eye condition the Lord is healing an eye condition in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ I'm seeing someone with a tooth problem you have your molars like severe pain I don't know if it's like hole in the teeth right now that hole closes now in the name of Jesus I close that hole now in the name of Jesus Christ lower abdominal pain i'm seeing several ladies with lower abdominal pain i'm seeing like fire leaving me to all of those ladies in the name of jesus lower abdominal pain be healed right now be healed right now i'm seeing a lady right from the last three like three weeks you have been bleeding severely whether you're on your menstrual cycle or not severe bleeding Right now the power of God is coming upon you. Coming upon you now. Coming upon you now. And is living completely. In the name of Jesus Christ. There is someone you don't hear well with your right ear. You don't hear well with your right ear. All of a sudden it opens now. 
in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ pile there are at least three people I'm seeing with pile I command in the name of Jesus that devil be healed be, be, let them go right now and pile be healed in Jesus name now there is a lady don't be embarrassed I'm seeing you are not a nursing mother yes there are discharges on your breast this is something that is, 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 a, is, is an embarrassing thing the devil has used to mock you the power of God is coming on that lady right now and there is complete healing complete healing I'm seeing someone with a growth in your neck just somewhere here after the prayer you will check it and you will not see that growth again it disappears and leaves in the name of Jesus Christ if there's anyone in this place on a crutch or on a wheelchair when I finish praying throw that cross and stand up in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ I decree and declare if there's anyone having any kind of walking aid the moment I finish praying throw it and stand up in the name of Jesus every pain on your limbs anyone with pain on your limbs I command healing right now peptic ulcer be healed right now peptic ulcer be healed right now all forms of hepatitis be healed right now be healed right now S S A S. be healed right now be healed right now if there is anyone here with any growth in your body the devil has planted any lump on your breast your body or any part of your your system in the name of Jesus I command that go to disappear right now I command that go to disappear right now in the name of Jesus there's, there's somebody you have I don't know what problem you have with your nose the Lord is showing me this is something that has affected your ability to smell it has affected your ability to smell after the prayer you will be surprised everything just leaves right now in Jesus name I'm seeing someone with a pain just right here at the arm in the name of Jesus Christ I command that pain to leave right now I command that pain to leave right now I command that pain to leave right now now don't be embarrassed I'm seeing someone there is like a severe boil around your private area and this boil has an unusual pain you have treated it again and again and again and it will not go in the name of Jesus I command healing for you right now I command healing for you right now I command healing for you right now someone had a dream and in the dream they used an object and they hit you with it physically when you got off this side madam you are the one I'm talking about you come let me talk to you because immediately I spoke the Lord told me this is a woman come do I know you madam you had a dream is that true they hit you with yes at that time I was pregnant they hit me with something like spear like a spear yes, and from that time you've been having that pain yes, till now sir. even the son I gave back to he came out with that pain. He came out with that pain too. Yes. Madam, you came here for koinonia. This is where all things are possible. All, not some. All things are possible. Hold my hands. In the name of Jesus, I bring an end to this oppression. In the name of Jesus, let that devil leave you. In the name of Jesus Christ, I'm still praying. In the mighty name of Jesus, I'm seeing... Um, there is somebody just right here at, at, at this, this point of my leg there is severe pain like muscle pull sometimes it holds on you and you cannot even move the Lord is setting you free right now there is somebody your eyes when you look physically it looks like they are putting a rod in front of you like a, a, a little object coming out of you are looking but it's like your eyes one of it is beginning to close and it looks like there is a rod or something like that on your eyes this is what I'm saying I command that eye to be open right now now whether I mention your case or not in the name of Jesus be healed overflow 1 be healed overflow 2 be healed overflow 3 be healed our family online be healed and in the main auditorium here be healed 
In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I want you to check yourself now in the next two minutes. Many of you will be surprised to see what has happened. The moment you see that the hand of God has touched you, make your way quickly and come and line up here. Lord, you reign and you rule over all. Celebrate Jesus. Unto you we ascribe all the praise. Victory. Lord, you reign and you rule over all. Jesus a big, 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 big clap. Hallelujah. Hold on. Please, you should join the queue so that we can hurry up quickly. Your name, your testimony, just bring them here quickly. So that, okay, go ahead. My name is Joy. Can we have them up here? Is it possible? Will it take time? Okay, quickly. Just a few minutes. Okay, my name is Joy. I've been having this toothache for months. And toothache? Yes, sir. And then when you mention the toothache, as in, it gives me headache. And then... That moment I could not feel the head. Completely. Completely. It's gone right now. Any pain around your tooth. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Yes, please. Praise God. My name is Joshua I've been healed. I've been Yes, someone from be confirming that maybe going down past the Alpha. Four years tonight I received my healing. And I stood here for my mom. She's having five rods. I believe she's healed tonight. In, In the, the name, name of, of Jesus, Jesus Christ, it never returns to you by the power of the Holy Ghost. Yes, please, quickly. Mama mm. Mr. Fia, what? Any pain? Any pain? Give Jesus praise. Look at this. Look at this. Could not work well. And the Lord is healing her. In the name of Jesus, perfection. Perfection of that, that area in Jesus' name. Quickly. Miracles, miracles. The Lord is doing great miracles. That's a sign that everything that has not been corrected in your life, tonight my God is correcting it in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Destiny changer. You are the destiny changer. Will you come and change my destiny? My destiny today. Come and change my destiny. witchcraft over your life is broken forever. In the name of Jesus Christ. God bless you. Yes, please. Apostle, this is partial blindness healed by the hand of the Lord tonight. What happened to him? Uh, last year, I had a problem with this. Uh, your serious eye. pain. Okay. And then I went to the hospital, eye center in Kaduna. The doctor confirmed that I can no longer see with this eye. Oh, you went to eye center in Kaduna? Yes. And the doctors confirmed? That you will not be able to use the eye to see again. Yes. What happened tonight? As the prayer was going on. Eyes open. I, yes. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Close the one you can see with. Close the one you could see with before. Follow me. Just follow me. Follow me. Follow me. 
follow me follow me are you see just follow me be careful can you see me follow me look at completely blind could not see with this one follow me if you can see me follow me follow me follow me follow me follow me look at this see jesus praise hallelujah in the name of jesus sir i prophesy to you that not this is a sign that every other thing that has been closed in your life my god is opening it right now in the name of jesus give jesus praise go ahead yes please for ever a month, I can't see with these eyes. You can't see very well yes, with these eyes. Then the eyes will be closing and be growing small. I went to Shika, they give me drugs, my HOD prays. Sometimes I cannot even open my eyes. Sometimes if I'm opening water, then when the apostle was like saying, the Lord is turning somebody's right eye. And instantly if I close my eyes and it's me, the ease just stop. I really want to go to the name of the Lord. That devil leaves you forever in the name of Jesus Christ. Call down from overflow three. Oh, the lady from overflow three. Your mother, did you call her? You called yes. her. What happened? She's in my evening. Look at this. Where is she? Where is your mother? She's in Kano. She's in Kano. And then what happened? As in, she has five problems. We are going to see oh, she has five. Yeah, we are going to see this hospital. There's nothing wrong with her. She's completely well. And she used to, her blood, her blood used to flow every day. Every My day. God, look at this. And you call her right now. She's really completely <laughs> in the name of Jesus Christ. The God who can leave Zaria to Kano to kill a woman. May he go to everyone's family and bring supernatural healing. In the name of Jesus Christ. Go ahead. Yes, please. Praise God. Sometimes last year, December, I slept one night and I woke up around past one and I was not able to sleep because I was having issues with my hair. My hair, was, my hair started paining me. Then I slept up the following morning, I woke up and my hair started falling off. I couldn't control it. I went to the saloon to make to retouch it and stretch. You see, even at that point, the hair all just went. I had to just cut my hair. And after cutting my hair, my mom prayed. Because I could, I refused to tell her concerning the dream that I had. Because if I should tell her, she would start panicking. So after that, I prayed and anointed my hair. And after since then, my hair has become stronger, normal. Can you imagine? This is the hair. The hair is falling off. Every devil, in the name of Jesus, the hair of a woman is her glory. I command restoration for your hair. She has had hair problem for some days now. Hair problem. Yes, Which sir. of the hair? My right ear. We have having severe pain and. Severe pain. Yes, and yesterday it shot completely. It shot completely. Yes. And right now it's right open. Now it's open. Put your hand. Pain. Put your hand here. Look at me. Shout Jesus as loud as you can. Jesus! My name is Patricia Dolladi. Apostle made mention of the you have problem with your one of the sense organs. I was the one who knows. I couldn't smell. Yeah, you, you said could, could not smell. You couldn't smell. How long? For 13 years now. For how long? 13 years. 13 years. She couldn't smell. Look at this. And right now, there's perfume on my hands. Can you smell? Look at this. You can smell this now. Lion of Judah. My trust is in you. Hey. My trust is in you. Ladies and gentlemen, this lady could not smell. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray for you. Breathe in. Breathe in. Go ahead. In the name of Jesus, I release the life and the power of God to your body. It's over forever. In Jesus' name. Yes, please. Go ahead. Very unusual menstrual pain for 10 years. For 10 years. Let me tell you this. We have to pray for our sisters over this demonic thing because it's getting popular and many of our sisters are even believing that's how it will be. It's a wicked spirit. Don't believe it. It is the devil of darkness. And in the name of Jesus, if there is anyone under the sound of my voice that this has been your experience, I pray by the power of the God I serve that from tonight, 
that experience lives your life forever. When the pain comes, it will paralyze her legs. She won't be able to move. And she had she came here with that same pain. You came here with that same pain. Yes, and right now, what happened to you? I'm okay. I can Completely yes, free, yes. free forever. In the name of Jesus. Yes, please. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. She was bathing Christmas Day of 2015. Water entered her ear. And she has not been able to hear well since then. But as you prayed, her ear popped open. That's how you know it's the devil. Hear. That's how you know it's the devil. That you are bathing and water enters your ear. And then that's the end of it. And I've been suffering from typhoid for the past eight years. I came here very weak, but now I'm... For the past what? Typhoid for eight years. She came very weak, but now she's strong. You didn't go to the hospital? I've been going. It comes and goes. It comes and goes. name of Jesus Christ, let there be perfection right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, I speak to your ears, perfection. In the name of Jesus. Go ahead. Sir, um, this woman had a dream in December and then she saw uh, somebody in her dream and they told her this is facial cancer and she this woke is what? up facial cancer. Cancer of the face. Of the face. Is there something like that? Ah. And then she woke up and began to feel the symptoms. Oh, and the pains of the person she saw in the dream physically physically right now all the pain gone anyone that appeared to anyone in the dream and planted anything in your body tonight may it go back to that devil in the name of Jesus may it go back to that devil in the name of Jesus may it go back to that devil in the name of Jesus go ahead Okay, lift your hands now. I'll pray for you. That's why I took out time to explain this to you. In the name of Jesus, I command the hand of God to come upon your life. In the name of Jesus Christ, I decree and declare that every force of sickness in your body, every force of infirmity over your body, it lives now and forever in the name of Jesus. The strength to push through tonight and pray in the night until tomorrow in the afternoon when we will be breaking i release that strength to you right now in the name of jesus many of you will have dreams tonight and in those dreams you will see strange victories and you will get up in the morning with a physical manifestation of those victories in the name of jesus christ i release those dreams in the realm of the spirit i command that they are captured in your experience tonight in the name of Jesus Christ, again I decree and declare a strange grace for favor that between tonight and tomorrow as you come, let there be strange favor. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Someone pray, Father, thank you. Parus kalabra has kede balako jadeba stupe esia. Mento salajanas kubra akadabalando zedeba hashtadeba. Lift your voice, make sure you are praying, let it be from the depth of your heart. Thank you, Jesus, for January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, now December. Thank you. You have done all things well. Are there grateful people in this place? Jesus, we bless you. Harus talabaratu segete balatusi for your mercy, for your grace, for your goodness. Thank you. Shilabaratu segete balatusi. Hallelujah. Father, we are gathered tonight to say thank you. 
We are gathered tonight to declare that we love you. We are gathered tonight to enthrone Jesus. For the things you have done, for the battles you have won, only you are worthy of our praise. We magnify your name. For the things you have done, for the battles you have won, only you are worthy of our praise. We magnify your name. One more time, everyone. For the things you have done, for the battles. Only you are worthy of our praise. We magnify your name. Jesus, we declare that you are greatly to be praised. We do not take for granted your mercy, your grace. We do not take for granted the testimonies, the transformation, salvation, revival. We do not take for granted your walkings in and through our lives this year. And Father, we have come as people deeply grateful. We honor you, we recognize your grace and your mercy and your majesty. Let the name of the Lord be glorified. From the rising of the sun even to the going down of the same. We declare, let the nations praise you. And we join the people, so God, to praise you and to declare that forever you are God. You have done all things well, and to Jesus be all the praise. Amen and amen. Please walk to two or three people, celebrate them from the depth of your heart, tell them something nice. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Mena yi zaka soni aka. Mena yi. Are there grateful people? Mena yi zaka soni aka. Abne yafi kodiya. Da 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 da. Psalm 50 verse 5, the last function before we get to the word tonight. The Bible says, Gather unto me my saints, they that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. Now, it's a culture in this ministry that um, at the closing of the meeting, we provide an opportunity and we challenge people um, to sow with understanding into the ministry uh, there's always an end of year sacrifice not necessarily today all through within the time of the break as God would lay it in the hands of people we believe in giving but we believe in giving that is done from a standpoint of love non-manipulative giving and um, the Bible allows believers to be part of kingdom advance and so this is, is very very important um, so we'll give this opportunity again um, not necessarily today but all through within the time of the break into January it's our culture as a ministry we call on all who have been blessed 
and um, lifted and changed, transformed through this ministry to be part of this as God grants them the grace. Um, all sacrifices and all seeds um, will be collected in our central accounts. There's no proxy, there's no giving to people. I'm saying this in advance because usually when announcements are made like this, you will have all these funny people begin to arise. Um, the accounts should be displayed and will be displayed. And you can have it down and as God grants you the grace, you can sit as a family, as individuals, and trust God to just minister to you what you will give. Now this is very important. Please listen very carefully. Um, the end of year sacrifice seeks to do three things. Number one, it is, it is your expression of thanksgiving. It's a sacrifice of thanksgiving in recognition um, of all the things that God has done in our lives. God has been merciful. Many of us have received all kinds of breakthroughs. And so we come with that seed of sacrifice. Number two, um, it is part of your commitment towards kingdom advance. I believe that believers have a responsibility to stand to see that the purposes of God be advanced. There is no magic about what happens to the resources that believers give. It adds to the overall resources that are used for kingdom advance. And so it's always an opportunity for believers to sow knowing that for every soul that is saved, life transformed, and every contribution towards kingdom advance, it is recognized in heaven. Number three, it is a prophetic connection um, as a way of communicating your expectations to God. I believe that with all my heart. When you connect with understanding, you release your faith, believing God for that which He would do. Uh, let me tell you something. I have discovered that believers are not greedy, globally speaking. I used to think believers are greedy, but I don't believe that anymore. The problem usually is the integrity with the management of the resources of the kingdom. When people sow seeds, when they commit resources and you know people divert seeds that are meant for kingdom activities into personal um, you know personal gains and all of that this is usually where people are discouraged to give and all of that but I believe that people always give and will give when it is number one non-manipulative non-manipulative Giving from the standpoint of manipulation, I tell you, is a waste of time because there is no reward for you. Praise the Lord. Giving under threat to give, otherwise this it's it's not it's not manip it's a manipulative kind of giving. There's no blessing. The Bible says, if there be first a willing heart, a willing mind, are we together? So it is important by God's grace, where people of integrity, uh, even as a ministry. All of the blessings of God you see upon my life and upon our lives have come as products of a thorough understanding of the systems, the financial systems of the kingdom, alongside the grace to appropriate the keys that should be to make for the blessings of the Lord upon our lives. You can prosper with the dignity of kingdom integrity and, um, and with honor. And this is what... You see, if there is anything at all that looks like the blessing of God upon our lives, it is credited to the intelligence of the ways of God that makes for that possibility. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So please, um, we are challenging and calling on everyone, businesses, individuals, our friends, partners, sons, daughters, ministries, um, all around the world who follow us sincerely as the Lord grants you grace. Um, do well to support, do well to give. Please understand that what you are doing is not a donation. What you are doing is a connection with understanding. Um, you donate to a social welfare platform. This is a spiritual platform that brings real results when the principles are engaged with understanding. Are we together? Praise the Lord. Let's pray in advance for this end of year sacrifice. Lord, we thank you. It's an honor and a privilege to give. It's an honor and a privilege to sow. 
and we stand in agreement with the millions around the world who have been blessed, lifted, touched, transformed, saved, healed in and through this ministry. And Lord, we thank you for the opportunity you are providing for us to be part of Kingdom Advance. We are grateful for the participation of the saints. And Lord, we pray that you who is the supervisor of your laws, may you bless and reach everyone according to their needs in the name of Jesus. Every seed that is sown in honor to this, um, this announcement, I pray that it will return to the givers a thousandfold. In the name of Jesus, may the Lord bless everyone who is a faithful giver. May the Lord bless everyone who is a participant and a partner with what God is doing. And may we all go from glory to glory. In Jesus' name I pray. Are you ready for the word? Just a brief admonishment. Acts chapter 2. Well, thank you Jesus. Acts chapter 2. We we'll start from verse 36. The Lord put this in my heart and tonight's teaching will really, really bless you. It's an admonishment, but it will bless us. Acts chapter 2 from verse 36. This, this, is, this is Apostle Peter um, at the upper room. Now this is the first official salvation message after the Holy Ghost came. Therefore, let all the house of Israel, please follow carefully, know assuredly that God hath made the same Jesus whom ye have crucified, both Lord and Christ. 37. Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their hearts and said unto Peter and the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Peter is responding now, 38. Then Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. 39 is where my message is coming from. For the promise, let's read together. For the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are far off even as many as the lord our god shall call one more time uh-huh even as the lord this is a very interesting scripture because this is the first salvation message and peter is letting the body of believers then and prophetically everyone know that the promises of God, this included, is not for certain individuals. He says the promise is unto you. Number two, unto your children. Number three, unto all those who are far off. Was talking about the Gentile nation now. Then he says, as many as our Lord shall call. Very powerful. Very, very powerful revelation. The promise is for all. Not for few. The promise, not for men of God. The promise, not for Americans. Not for British people. Not for Africans. This is a powerful revelation because until we understand that in Christ there is a central platform that allows all and sundry access to the possibilities of the kingdom. Are we together now? The proposition that makes it look as though there are individuals who have been isolated from the experience of the kingdom is a very dangerous communication. The promise, please keep that scripture for us, is first for you. Everybody say it's for me. Then for your children and then to all that are far off. Even as many as the Lord will call. Second scripture. Acts chapter 10 please. We'll start from verse 34 to 35. I'm establishing first and foremost the centrality and the neutrality of God's operation when it has to do with the saints. That there is an equal platform for the saints to be able to partake of the reality of the life and the power of the Christ. 
regardless of background, regardless of sentiments, that when we come to Christ, there is a level playing ground that allows any believer who is interested to be the partaker of the reality of the experience of the kingdom. Acts chapter 10, we start from verse 34. Now, Peter, this was after the Holy Ghost fell upon the Gentile nation. Are we still together? Say Amen. Then Peter opened his mouth and said, Of a truth I perceive that God is what? No respecter of persons. In other words, there is no favoritism as it were with him. Next verse. But in every nation, Africa, hear this, in every nation, including Africa, in every nation, including Nigeria, he that feareth him and walketh righteousness is accepted with him. That means that every possibility in the kingdom is for the taking of all. Please understand this. That in the economy of God, there is no default preferences that attempts to victimize any individual. Not on spiritual grounds, not on grounds of career, not on grounds of maybe wealth and all of that. There is no such thing with God. The reality of the Christ life puts a neutral ground for anyone to be able to become everything destined by God. This is a revelation as we end the year. It's, it's, it's a reminder for some and it's a revelation for others. Two more scriptures. Romans chapter 10 and verse 12. Romans chapter 10 and verse 12. The Bible says, Apostle Paul now is teaching, For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord, everyone please read with me, The same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon Him. The same Lord rich unto an American like he is unto an African, reach unto the south as he is unto the north, as he is unto the east. Are we together now? I'm establishing the fact that everyone's destiny, please listen to me, in Christ, everyone's destiny in Christ depends on their knowing God and they are activating the truths of the kingdom. There is nobody who excels by default. There is nobody who succeeds by default. When it has to do with dealings, the dealings of men with God, there is a level playing ground for everyone. The last scripture, Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 16. You know, we come from all kinds of families and some of us have been indoctrinated by our sociological context into believing that we are disadvantaged. Listen to me very carefully. You may never understand how destructive that understanding is. That you sustain a thinking that there are people who never believe God can speak to them directly. There are people who never believe that they can know God on their own. There are people who never believe that they can experience the power of God and the grace of God. There are people who never believe they can prosper in this life. No. We have all kinds of subliminal communications that have come from our backgrounds that continue to plant dangerous perspectives. I've done a lot of teachings on mindsets and strongholds and this is one of such teachings. He said, let us be Therefore, come boldly. Everybody say boldly. Unto the throne of grace. Let us, not let some, everyone, come boldly to the throne of grace that we, as a corporate body, may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. The throne of grace is accessible by everyone and anyone in Christ. In fact, including sinners. So the Bible says, let us all come to that throne of grace. 
Are you getting what I'm saying now? These four scriptures show us the centrality and the neutrality of God's dealings with men. In God's economy, there are no superiors to others by default. Follow me closely. There are no favorites as it were. The same Lord is rich unto all. The Bible talks in the book of Jude, I think, of what he called the common salvation. Common salvation. There's no special blood that speaks for Joshua Selman or speaks for the, the, uh, what the, the president of any nation. No, it is the same blood that was shed for everyone. Are we together now? Yes. There is no individual who can rise to the fullness of the potentials in Christ when you believe that there is a sense of inferiority. In fact, this is Kenyon's definition of righteousness. He defines it as the ability to stand in the Father's presence without a sense of guilt, inferiority, and then condemnation. The key word there is inferiority. That when I stand before God and you stand before God, based on that which has been provided for by the Christ, we stand from the same platform. Please believe this. Now, it is true that culturally speaking, if you are born by a millionaire, you are not necessarily the same, sociologically speaking, with someone who was born somewhere in the village. Are we together? There is an economic advantage. If you are born in a nation where the government, for instance, is more strategic in nation building, you already have an environment. There are nations today when you are born in, you will only need a few visas for the rest of your life because of the advantage of that territory. There are others when you are born in, even your neighboring country, you will need your passport stamps to just cross over. Because of this social economic disadvantage that comes with those territories are we together in Christ the same Lord is rich unto all so when I stand and I see God doing mighty things with Benihim when I stand and I see God doing mighty things with the millionaires and billionaires when I stand and I see God doing great things with men of God I am inspired but not inspired to the point where you will now rate yourself as second class. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Listen to me. On every champion and every world changer has found a way of indoctrinating themselves, not arrogantly so, but truthfully so, into an understanding that I stand in a platform through Christ that opens me up to any advantage possible on earth. Do you know what it means to be a child of God? Being a child of God is the most superior most superior honor that any man can get on earth the second honor you can get on earth is to be the son of a monarch or to be a monarch the third will be to be an ambassador or a politician at the highest level there, there are cadres of honor the highest of them is to be called a child of God behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us in that we are called the... You know, we just say it carelessly. I'm a child of God. Donald Trump's son needs only few assignments in his life. Are we together now? Because a major part of it has been solved. Look at this, our lovely children that we just dedicated. The truth is that there are some struggles they will not have in their life again till Jesus comes. Remember, we are the bridge between the old and the new. We have been that sacrifice that have, you know, labored for people. I am a child of God. It's a powerful revelation. The monarch of the universe is my father. Let that revelation touch you. When you say God is my father, many people are used to abusing the name God. For some people, God is a bottle of minerals. For some people, God is an idol with a stone. So when you say God is my father, it doesn't carry the weight. I'm no longer slain to fear. I am a child. 
And I'm no longer slave to fear. I am just. So you may come from a background that has no advantage. It is true that your earthly father may not be able to help you. It is true that your heavenly, your earthly mother or whatever it is, the disadvantage. But the consciousness that the monarch of the universe has decided to become my father and I am his child is a revelation that you must have. It instantly gives you a sense of superiority. Not from a negative standpoint. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Yes. But you move around knowing that the earth is your estate. When I travel to any region, I expect the same thing to happen, regardless of location, because I am still within the domain of my father. Now, when you travel to other parts of the world, you will do left-hand driving, others right-hand driving. When you pass through other places in the world, because of the system of government, sociologically speaking, you are mandated to do certain things. But the awareness that the earth is the Lord's, that means in reality, there is no disadvantage. Because wherever you are, located and situated within this territory, it is the domain of this monarch called God. Are we together now? Very powerful. So the Bible says that we come boldly. This is the first thing I want to establish. The promises of God. Not just the promise of the Holy Spirit. The promises of God that are written in Scripture. The promises to prosper, the promises to heal, the promises to lift, the promises to bless. Listen, the promise of influence, like God spoke to us, Genesis 17 and verse 6. I will make you exceeding fruitful, he said, and that kings will come out of your loins. Nations will come out of you. It's not necessarily, it's, it was to Abraham, but Galatians 3.29 says, If ye be Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed, and heirs are according to the promise everybody is a spiritual Jew in Christ and that reality has brought us to a point where there is no disadvantage I pray that God will help you understand what I've said it is not our background no it is not our sociological context it is an understanding of the neutrality the centrality so understand this tonight, even as we prepare to live and travel to different regions. There is nobody called by God to a life of failure. Bishop Oyedepo said, every calling in Christ is a high calling. Everybody say a high calling. Yes. There are no low callings in Christ. Nobody is called to a life of failure, mediocrity, defeat. No. We are called to a life of excellence. We are called to a life of grace. We are called to a life of influence. We are called to a life where the Bible says that through the church, the manifold, many-sided wisdom of God will be displayed to principalities and powers. If you are with me, please say Amen. amen. Now, but strangely so, and I want to pay attention now, the Bible seems to be very open about individuals that God decided to carve out a name for. And I want to show you the secrets so that we can tap into this grace and into this possibility. The first is in Genesis chapter 18 from verse 17 to 19. God seems to talk to Abraham in a strange way. And the Bible records that Abraham was called the friend of God. Not many people in life are ever called the friend of God. We are reading from verse 17 down to 19. This will bless you. Look at me. He says, and the Lord said, look up please. Shall I hide from Abraham that thing which I do? 18. Seeing that Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation and that and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him is a question 19 for i know him mm. 
that he will command his children and his household after him and they shall keep the way of the Lord to do justice and judgment that the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he had spoken of him Abraham the friend of God it is true that there is a central ground in dealing with God but it seems as though certain individuals were able to route certain pathways with God that now began to create a bias in God's dealings with them to make God himself now start giving them names the name son of God child of God is a generic name for everybody it defines the centrality of God's love but that certain individuals went a step further with God and they started earning for themselves titles that represented special attentions titles that represented certain covenants so from that neutral standpoint you can start growing yourself into specific possibilities with God are you getting what I'm teaching tonight so for Abraham he became the friend of God and John chapter 15 please 15 and 16 very powerful scripture John 15 he said you have not chosen me look up but I have chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit he's talking about fruitfulness and that your fruit should remain and whatsoever you shall ask of the father in my name he may give it to you next verse he says these things no no go to verse 16 Oh dear, did I miss something? Yes, 15. Let's start from 15. 15 and then 16 and 17. Henceforth, that's what I'm looking for. I call you not servants. Now, it's not an insult to be called a servant of God. A servant of God is not a slave. A servant of God is one who has submitted himself to serve the purposes of God. I know sometimes we say servant, I'm not a servant. If you mean that contrasting sonship, you are right. But you will understand as you grow with God that the hallmark of sonship is servanthood. Are we together? So to be called a servant of God is not an insult. We are bond servants. Paul uses the word bond slaves, but not unto servitude in a negative way. Henceforth, I call you not servants, okay? For the servant, now look at this. This is, oh dear, oh dear. May God open our eyes to see in the name of Jesus. Notice, the proof of servant is ignorance of certain information, knowledge. It says, for a servant knoweth not what the Lord doeth it says but I have called you friends what is the advantage of friendship for all things that I have heard of my father I have made known to you the advantage of friendship with God is the privilege of access to spiritual knowledge you know you are a friend of God to the degree to which he bends over backwards to open you up to the mysteries of the kingdom the truths of the kingdom the Bible calls them the secret things of God this one is not for everybody is God helping us tonight Abraham my friend shall I hide this from him shall i hide this from him a servant does not know he may obey religiously without knowing but a friend is privy to information god is about to do certain things and he said no abraham is my friend this is powerful so god calls abraham his friend so i can know that i am growing just from sonship into friendship by god by the depth to which he is fortitude to share the secrets of the kingdom and you know that dominion in this kingdom is a function of the secrets of the kingdom that we access it's called the hidden wisdom of god by me kings reign and princes decree justice with me are riches wealth and honor yea durable riches and righteousness they that love me and seek me early will find me Acts chapter 13 we're still building on this Acts chapter 13 from verse 21 to 23 
Another man carves out a title for himself. Although at a level playing ground, we are all children of God, or we are all creations of God, we now see another man who went out of his way. And afterwards, Peter is speaking now. They desired a king, and God gave unto them Saul, the son of Kish, a man of the tribe of Benjamin, by the space of 40 years. Next verse. And when he had removed him, he raised up unto them, read with me, David to be their king. Uh -huh. To whom also he gave testimony. Stop. Who testified? God. God is about to give a testimony that... I have found David, the son of Jesse, help me, a man after my own heart. What qualifies him to be a man after my own heart? His insistence to see that my will is always fulfilled. Now, notice how these people end their titles. Most times we just know their titles, but I'm showing you what they did. How they went far, when it has to do with the friend of God, he's saying, you have done something to me that forbids me from hiding things from you. I give you access to knowledge as proof of friendship. When it now has to do with a man after his heart, he's saying, I have discerned that this man will die doing my will. And I have given him, I've given him a title of a man after my own heart. God is testifying, not a prophet. A man who pursues my heart, not who pursues the throne. Don't forget the man is a king and yet God does not talk about his throne. He will abandon his throne to seek the heart of God. And God says, this man is a man after my heart. Why? Because of his insistence to see that my will is being done. Next verse. Of this man's seed... Had God, of this man see that God, according to his promise, raised up unto Israel a Savior, Jesus. This is his reward. For being a man after God's heart, God insisted that your seed must participate in the lineage that will bring... David was not the only man after the order of, you know, God and all of that, but he is, he is called the seed of David, thou son of David, not thou son of Rahab, not thou son of Boaz, not thou son of Naomi. They all played their roles, but out of those people, God selected one man to become, to personify his passion towards a man. Are you learning something tonight? A man after my heart, a friend of God. This is a very powerful revelation. Now, let me share with you something very, very powerful. Um, and, and, and this is where I think and I believe that many believers are not properly mentored. And as we go on break, it's important to remind and re-emphasize this. That in the dealings of God, man will always have a role to play in actualizing prophecy. Please listen carefully. That the systems of God work twofold. One, the dimensions that are finished from God's standpoint. And then number two, through the experience of alignment and obedience, we make manifest that which has been finished in our lives. Philippians chapter 2 and verse 12. Philippians chapter 2 and verse 12. It says, Wherefore, Paul is admonishing the church in Philippi, Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence. Hear what he says. Walk out your own, not your neighbor, not your child, not your wife, not your husband. Walk out your own salvation and give it a level of diligence with fear and trembling. Walk out your own prosperity. Walk out your own intimacy with the Holy Spirit. 
work out your own ensure that you press into God so much that he is forced to find a name for you he calls Abraham a friend of God he calls Jacob the one he names it after a generation of intimacy and he said listen you have a responsibility to press until until you give him no rest the Bible says until he establishes Jerusalem there is a way you can wear God out if I can use that word through your passion and your intimacy he will brand his relationship with you and give it a name that defines his unique attention towards you work out your own salvation you will read about prosperity and never enter into it you will read about divine health and never enter into it now listen because this is a serious problem with africa the awareness of things like the finished work of christ which is true has when not properly balanced has provided a platform for a lot of irresponsibilities in believers and the ability to sustain the fortitude to press as an act of faith is not there so we have people who just sit down and want everybody pray for me be wealthy for me be prosperous for me and that fortitude that participatory effort is not there are we together now so many people want to know the holy spirit and they think the key to knowing the holy spirit is to receive an impartation from a man who knows the holy spirit what you are going to receive from that impartation is a ladder a ladder that you will climb hello a ladder that you what you will climb it through your prayer you will climb it through your relationship you will climb it through the sacrifice of the instructions god will give you that is not for everybody it's for only you you are about to eat and God says, turn the plate upside down. You are fasting for one week. He said, God, is it for everybody? He said, no, it's for only you. He said, God, why me? I mean, scripture. He says, I thought you want a name. A name that defines the extent of my intimacy with you. This is the pathway that leads to such a possibility. Now, there are rewards when you contend that much. Because you will, I mean, in physically now, we have what we call regular treatment of guests, whether in hotels, airports, whatever. We have what is called priority treatment. Now, the Nigerian government does not allow favoritism. But the various sacrifices of people have forced to have a lounge, a business lounge, a general place where people sit down. All those things are not favoritism. They are a way of rewarding the contribution of those people to nation building. So, in as much as there is a level playing ground, there is something you and God can do that makes it unfair for God to generalize his dealings with you that from that time is a covenant you create that makes it impossible for God to deal with you the way he deals with everyone this is true it's a very powerful mystery that I show you work out your own salvation Thou shalt remember the Lord thy God. It is he that gives you the power to get well. A lot of believers start jumping. In the name of Jesus, I will never be poor. You are getting poor. You are seeing it. God is, your poverty is a report card. God is telling you, you are missing something. I will never be poor. I'm not being sarcastic. And you find out that a lot of people, and then here and there, we just browse through the laws. Okay, what and what should I know? Okay, tithing, giving, I should do business, I should do this. And then you just do one or two things and find out that nothing changes. And at a point, you just say, Kai, it's Nigeria yourself man must work and you know all of this we find obvious excuses and then things never change but there are people who will will you will see them burn the candle in the days of my youth when the secret of the Lord was upon my tabernacle, when his light shined upon my head, there is a light that shines upon your head. There is the one that shines upon your feet. The one that shines upon your head gives you illumination. It says there is a spirit in man. If you only have the light that shines on your feet, you will keep walking. But let me tell you the truth, you will need the one that grants you access to knowledge. Are, are you getting what I'm teaching you now? Yes. Work out your own salvation. Any ministry that grows is worked out. You know, a lot of people sometimes, respectfully, people see me and say, Wow, Apostle God is doing mighty things in your life. And I say, Yes, He is, and I, I really thank Him. Ah, you are anointed, though. 
And you know, sometimes I'm tempted to say, I, I hear you are carrying the anointing of the generals. And I'm tempted to say, are they my relatives? How did that happen? You see, this, this is the question we need to ask. How God has favored you, God has favored Koinonia, my brothers and my sisters, behind everything that works is somebody working it. Working it with diligence, working it with passion, working it with zest. Behind every business that works, it is favor. Every house is built by some man, but God is still the builder. It's a mystery. This issue of being a worker, this language work, believers don't like it. The, men, the moment you mention work, people don't ah, why must I work? Oh dear. Genesis chapter 2, after God creates man and woman, he now comes to take clay. God, the creator who speaks and creates, used his hand, not his mouth alone. When you read chapter 1 alone, you are deceived. Because that's where he spoke and created it in the realm of the spirit. You must go to chapter 2 and see God the worker, not just God the speaker. It takes more than speaking to build a destiny. Your hands must be soiled. You will put your hands down and make it happen. There are people around just looking for impartation, looking for cheap prophecy, and there is a place for those things. But it is only activated whilst you walk. Whilst you walk. Hallelujah. Many people are going to remain poor. It's not, it's not a negative prophecy. And my heart pains me while I say this. Many people are going to remain mediocre in their life. Many people may never sustain the level of influence and grace that it takes to birth the purposes of God generationally. And it is not necessarily because God decided to use others. It is your individual commitment. Elisha was never supposed to be a prophet. Elisha was a farmer. But he followed Elijah and said, I don't care what you are going to do with me. Oh, I must carry some. They were already sons of the prophet. The next prophet should come out of them. But someone said, I need, I, I, I can't die farming. I started farming, but I will follow you until something comes upon my life. We define our realities by the unashamedness to pursue the keys of the kingdom until something comes from heaven to your life. I will never be the same, I've touched your grace, my life will change. I will never be the same, I've touched your grace, my life will change. I will never be the same, I've touched your grace, my life I I I Finances with fear and trembling. Man of God, sit down, work out your ministry, work out your sermons. Don't just wait for an impartation that will teach you verses. Open your Bible, mark them, write them down. When others are sleeping, wake up. There is the labor dimension of greatness. No impartation will replace it. You don't sit down and casually fast yourself the way you like into uncommon anointings. You are joking. You pray once in a while, when you want, one hour per year, two hours per year. No. Buy the books. Read your way to excellence. Use your diligence to create a space for yourself in destiny. My life will change. Eh? My life must change. My life will change. Eh? My life will change. I will never be the same. I've touched his grace. My life must change. I will never be 
is verse 10. Please listen my brothers and my sisters. This is a message to the body of Christ. We must be careful. We are missing a very major key. The dimension of spiritual diligence. It cannot be bought. There are certain wells you must dig by yourself. Africa likes prophecy. We like impartation. We like to receive. But there are wells that must be dug. There are, there are fountains that must be broken. It's a sacrifice. The price is death. Are we together? Go to verse 8. Go to verse 8. Second Peter 1. For if these things be in you. Look at this now and abound they make that you shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our lord jesus christ nine but he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar off and hath forgotten that he was purged from his old sins ten wherefore the rather he says brethren give diligence to make your calling and your election sure it is true you are called but prove it it is true you are called, but give the level of diligence that makes your calling and your election sure. It is true you are a prophet, but prove it. It is true you are an apostle, but prove it. It is true that God has raised you to be a voice, but obtain grace to prove it. Give diligence. Diligence. Diligence in prayer. Diligence in the study of the word. Diligence in the sacrifice of compliance. Listen, let me tell you. Real success is not at a platter of gold at any level. Whether it is spiritual success, whether it is financial success, whether it is grace and influence. It is a sacrifice of continual press. As your insistence is what makes life open the gate for you. Is God speaking to us? This is where men are separated from boys. This is where what provides the disparity in ministry. This is what provides the disparity in business. This is what provides the disparity in the advantages that we command in our lives. I've had the privilege and the opportunity to talk with a few very great people, and I am amazed at the silent sacrifices of these things these people when you see a wealthy man all you see is the affluence and you see the money until you find out the sacrifices that go on when you see a man of god you may just see the miracles and the signs and the wonders until you see the sacrifices that go on when you see a great person even politicians it's amazing that those people don't sleep two o'clock three a.m they are organizing meetings there are men of God who organize vigils, they sleep by 5, 6 and by 8, they are awake to attend to programs. Whoever told you that this thing just comes easy is a sacrifice. It says to be diligent. Someone will have to obtain that grace today. Wishing and hoping and believing that just laying on of hands and all of that, people are lucky. No. There are many platforms of advantage like prophetic connections like all of these kinds of things but none of them will replace the track record of sustained diligence hallelujah diligence this is what i've learned in my life as i have studied different people in ministry and then other platforms of life i have tried to look for what is the the, the, the impediment what is the one factor that seems to cancel out every effort because people do things 
but I've found out that most people are not diligent. Most people are hopeful. Most people are prayerful. Most people are very futuristic. But the ability to stamp your feet and say, I will walk this thing in the name of Jesus until it works. Ministry must work. Doors must open. By the price of diligence, the labor dimension. Jesus said, my father walked hitherto. I walk. My father walks and I walk. To the point that even seated at the right hand of the father, he's still engaged, making intercession for the saints. Many African nations, respectfully speaking, we have missed on the price of diligence, spiritual diligence, socioeconomic diligence, the diligence of mentorship, the diligence of the sacrifice of breaking these grounds until the fountains open. Can I be honest with you and submit to you? Next year will come and go. Year after next will come and go. Another year will come and go. A decade will come and go. Your lifetime will come and go until you draw yourself and say, Look, I am ready to walk this thing. Thank God for prophetic words. They are not a lie. But they only work for those who walk. Prophetic word does not work for those who hear. It works for those who walk. Diligent. Is God speaking to us tonight? Now let me share with you one key to add to your diligence or so and then we'll just rush to pray. I have found out, now I don't claim to have known God for too long, but I have enjoyed a little bit of His presence. And let me tell you something I found out with God. The single, look up, the single most important factor that governs the dealing of God with a man is the state of your heart. The purity and the truthfulness of the state of your heart is the master key to working with God. Write it down. There are many systems that continue to build men in the kingdom. But listen to me, my brothers and my sisters. There is nothing of God and of worth that will ever happen to a man, a people, a nation whose hearts are not pure towards God and whose hearts are not true towards God. The motivation and the motif of your heart vetoes your prayer life vetoes your fasting, vetoes your obedience. No matter what you do with God, you are not ready to start with God until He is able to x-ray your heart. The purity and the sincerity of your heart is the foundational platform of doing business with God. You have to understand this. There are many believers that ignore this and we do a lot of other things. We do business, we fast, we pray, we do ministry. But I have discovered in my work with God and from scripture that God is obsessed with knowing the truthfulness of the state of the heart of a man. And I have preached many messages along this line. Please get them and listen to them. See, the great in this kingdom are not necessarily the most diligent. The great in this kingdom are not necessarily as it were the closest people with God. But there is something I know about God. The purity of a man's heart is a force that magnetizes all of God to you. The state of your heart. Why do you want to prosper? Why do you want anointing? Why do you want to be a president? Why do you want to be a governor? Why do you want to be a man of God? Why do you want to be a business mogul? Do you know for many believers, this is where the real corruption lies. That the motive and the motivation intrinsically is not right. I know several men of God who will do anything within scripture to get power. They have the stamina to fast for as long. They have the stamina to pray. But the truth is that intrinsically, God has not found a space for himself in their motive. 
If there is one secret about my life, I tell you this, and I say it before God and I say it before you. If there is one secret, it is that if I prefer that I go to be with the Lord, if God cannot find a space for himself in my heart and in my motif. It's not just about anointing. Listen, it's not just about prosperity and influence. You know, many times when I travel and people are receiving me and the honor, the whole paraphernalia of honor and everything, and I see people admiring, and I just nod my head, I say, oh dear, oh dear. May God have mercy and grant us grace to reorient our understanding. Because this is some of these flamboyant things when we see we are, we are caught up and we go and say, no, me too, I must be rich, I must be blessed, and we start fasting. Already your motif has cancelled everything. And I, if I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw all men. I will draw all men. I want to marry. Why? I want children. Why? I want increase in ministry. Why? Listen, it is not a difficult thing for God to step in and help men. It is within God's power to lift men. Riches and honor come from Him. The influence and the power and the grace comes from Him. The problem is the state of our hearts. The greatest prayer, therefore, is not even intercession for souls. The greatest prayer is not binding witches and wizards. The greatest prayer is not deliverance from enemies. The greatest prayer is the prayer that turns your heart into a throne. The throne where he can be seated. The prayer that can turn your heart into a throne is a prayer God cannot ignore. Please, Koinonia, listen to me. These are my final words to us as we prepare to wrap up the year. There are people who God loves them as Savior to all. But doing the business of destiny, it has not started until that death happens. So sometimes when people come and say, Apostle, I want an impartation, I want grace. With all, it's a privilege to be able to do the things that we do for the kingdom. But I know that I'm wasting my time. I've read books on wealth and prosperity. I've read books on church growth. I've read books on influence, territorial dominion. At a point in time, I had to appreciate the books, but I closed them. I said, Lord, there must be a secret. And that's when he told me that the price for all of me is all of you. The price for all of me is not all of your brain. The price for all of me is not all of your singing. The price for all of me is not all of your worship. The price for all of me is all of you. Is God speaking to us? All of you. All of you. All of you. Now, let me tell you this. It is not unusual for a generation to not believe you. So don't think it is strange. My loved ones don't believe me. You are not the first. It is all right. A generation does not believe me. Nothing is believable till the results speak. Please understand this. But that price of death continues to be... And you see, the thing with death is you don't die once. It's Jesus that died once. The saints die every day. Hello? Jesus died once and for all because of the character of what he was doing. The atonement. You are not dying to atone. You are dying to yield. You are dying to align. The death is part 24 hours. The moment today is gone, you start the death of tomorrow. The moment tomorrow is gone, you start the death. For every dimension of death, there is a corresponding glory. The day you are tired, God will not force you. But he will show you that don't then ask for this dimension of glory when you are not willing to continue. Yeshua HaMashiach Komi Nanakane Yeshua Amashia, come in and come in and come Yeshua, 
Hamashiach. One more time. Komina nakane. Ya Yesu. Komina nakane. Let God find a dead vessel and you see the possibilities that can come out. Show me a man who has vowed to continue to die. I show you a glory that excels. Show me a people that continue to die. Our generation does not like the language of death because every time we talk of death, it spells inconvenience, it spells discomfort, it spells going out of. It means that sometimes God will strip you of everything you. It's a price for the glory. No matter how much impartation. Is a price for the glory. You are not just going to lay hands on the sick and say in Jesus' name, stand up, I'm a member of Koinonia. You are right. But let me tell you, when it comes to the depth of the dealings of God generationally, you will need to die generationally. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Please listen very carefully. There are people that God will give you instructions. Empty your account. There are people God will tell you 80% of all your wealth for the next two years. Keep giving it. He said, Lord, why? He said, because you said you want to be a kingdom financier. God, I said, I, I thought I should have. He says, I want to give you a revelation of the receipt that scattered and yet increased. You, are, you know it as a memory verse, but I'm leading you through a pathway that makes it an experience for you. Lord, I want you to anoint me. Grant me the grace that speaks across territories. And he says, you really want that? Yes, God, let's go. And you start the journey. And for starters, he says, give everything you have in your life. He said, God, I didn't hear you well. Give everything you have. Your reputation, your wealth, your everything, your clothes, your honor, give it away. That is the price. It's what he told the rich man. He said, go and sell everything you have. Follow me. The man said, no, no, no. Jesus, this one is so much. Authentic spiritual power does not just come by impartation alone. It comes by death. It comes by death. Lord, I'm trusting God for the grace for illumination, revelation. But your mind is full of many things. You must die to give it space. And when there is space, then the oil can come and the seeing eye can be given to you. Please listen to what I'm telling you. Remember my message. The same Lord is rich unto all, but by certain sacrifices, men have ascended this ladder and they have given, they have branded their dealings with God so that he has been forced through their sacrifices to no longer deal with them as he deals with men. This is the hand of God and this is the way he works. Scatter across the body of Christ are different individuals, different territories who have ascended different dimensions of ladders in the spirit and God has defined certain possibilities to them. There are churches and ministries when you enter there you must prosper. Even before you finish learning all the laws, at least you will prosper to a point where you will be surprised. You will know that I have no part in this because you are now a partaker of a covenant. God has vowed a vow by the sacrifices of certain people. Please listen to me, brothers and sisters. When you walk with God at a general level, you will go to heaven, but you will not do much. These are not even the people Satan is looking for. Satan will come and pass you. You will call him, he will still leave you. He's looking for people. There are people he's looking for desperately. Where are these ones that want to die? Where are these ones whose life is no longer their own? Where are these people who want to experience the anointing in another dimension? Where are these ones who want the power and the grace of God? Where are these ones who want the influence of nations? There is nothing that can and be done about a man who has chosen to die. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. And when a man has chosen to die, it's over. Boko Haram are a threat because of their willingness to die, not to live. When you want to live, you are in trouble. You are only free when you are ready to die. Oh, 
I have been crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live is a mystery. And the life that I live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God. That whatever it will cost me to die, I will die. Not for the sake of ministry, not for the sake of money, not for the sake of titles. That prayer to search my heart, try my thoughts, is a powerful prayer. It's a prayer you must pray for the rest of your life in this side of God's kingdom. The heart that cries for all of God, not more of God. All of God, not more of God. All of God. He will, he will come more and more. But the goal is for all of Him to be transfused into you. The secret to ministry is not invitations. The secret to ministry is not a crowd, it's not a church, it's not eloquence and oratory. The secret to ministry is not even the loyalty of men to serve you. The secret is death. Genuine, continual death. I died yesterday. You are joking. You die daily. I died last week. No, sir. You die daily. You are dying today. You will die next week. A time will come when you truly will not have any life on your own. These are the ones that step their feet upon the soil of nations. And like the waters, it will pass heat and theta. And you are wondering, are these men gods? They are men. But death translated them into another dimension. Please hear me, my brothers and my sisters. More than Bible study. More than mentorship. More than fasting. More than prayer. More than training your skills, the real secret is to die. After 30 years as Christ tarries, I will still be preaching this thing I'm saying. If you don't die, you cannot live. The way to live is to die. To die to yourself. To die to your ego. To die to your desires. It's a journey, a journey that until the day you see his face, you don't stop. I die daily. It is the price for carrying the anointing. It is the price for carrying grace. You can die to a point where it does not make any difference whether God keeps his wealth in heaven or he keeps it in your account. You have so died is the same thing. Whether the money is in your account or is in heaven, in God's mind is the same. Because any day he makes a demand, it will go. A time will come where whether the anointing is in heaven or the anointing is on your life is the same. Because God has guaranteed that you will die seeing to it that his purposes be established. This that I share with you is the price. When this is settled, then that's when every other thing makes sense. Your prayer life, your fasting, even your obedience to scripture. Believe me when I tell you all that is nonsense when you have not died. It's the reason why we will keep fasting, we will keep praying, we will keep quoting scripture. 
You see someone's car, you go and lie down on it and say, Oh God, please open my door. And you are right. It should bless you, but it will not bless you because you are speaking from a platform of a decadence of hearts. Yes, you are. Listen, we give, we give breaks in the ministry not just to allow us rest. It's been a busy year for everyone, but the goal is not just to rest and catch up. We are giving you one month so that it will help you die well. Die enough to carry the glory of 2020. Die enough to carry the power of 2020. Die enough to carry the voice and the mantle of 2020. That Lord, I am dead but not dead enough to carry the next glory. Dead but not dead enough to carry the mantle, the power. Dead but not dead enough to be trusted with kingdom influence. At that point, the one week. Now, you are not going to go to God as a worker. You are not going to God as Apostle Joshua Selman. You are not going to God as a leader. You are going to God as one who is desirous of his use. And now you can have the time to lock yourself. You can have the time to stay with God and stay till you die. While your flesh cries, you say, God, don't pity it. Forget about the tears of my flesh. Keep the death going. Just keep the death going. The death of your ego. Say, forget about my ego. Keep the death going. Ah, my money. Forget about the money. Keep the death going. Show me that man and I show you a man to fear in this life. A man that has mastered death. I die daily, Paul said. So he got to a point where he could say for me, oh, I don't know whether it is to go or to stay. I have conquered the interface of these limitations. But for your sake, I will stay. Let me tell you, my brothers and sisters, you've heard me say it again. There are virgin dimensions in the spirit. Compared to where God is taking us, we are only starting. And we must trust God for grace to not be complacent. The secret is to turn to God and sit down and die. The applause of men can deceive. Men can clap you and stop you from entering tomorrow. This one thing I do, the Bible says, forgetting the things that are behind. You must train yourself to forget. Both success and failure can do the same thing. It can kill you. So you lay it aside and say, Lord, what is the price for the next level? And he says, death. And he says, come. Like a doctor about to perform a surgery on a patient, let it go. Let the ministration of that death continue. And you are staying with God. He will tell you for the next three days, let no food enter your mouth. There is a surgery spiritually. And even the slightest meal can interrupt it. And he said, Lord, ordinarily I will want to eat. But for the joy that is before me, let me endure the cross and even despise the shame. And in the midst of that pain, suddenly you will meet an anointing. You will meet a grace. And God will tell you this anointing is what I'm releasing on earth for the next 15 years. That means whoever does not have this type of anointing cannot be featured in my program. And now that you have died enough, here you go pick it up and you pick it and like like the pages of a book another dimension of you is open and whilst you think you have exhausted you will see another dimension they go from strength to strength this is my message not just to go and celebrate Christmas and up and down not just to go drifting and wasting our time listen times with God are times of death now is not the time to go and be clapping for yourself in the secret place. It's foolishness. Great men are great because they forget their crowns. Great men are great because they forget their trophies. Great men are great because they forget their achievements. Create an immunity in your room that does not hear, let you hear the, the clappings of men. While they are clapping, you are dying. The clap increases. You are still dying. And the flesh tells you, have you not attained enough? And the Spirit of God says, you lie. Not for the mantle of a nation. Keep dying. Keep dying. You will see the effulgence of the power of God in your life. 
and men will look at you and say, are you a human being or you are a spirit? When you go back, God will say, can we continue? You are back from the meeting. You, some of you will go home and God will give you instructions. Organize crusades. Organize little meetings. And while you are doing all of those, people will look at you and say, at this koinonia. And while they are talking, you want to come back to life and the spirit will say, no, not at this point. Keep dying. The door to life is death. The door to the throne is the cross. The door to the cross. Then the grave. You must die. It is the one key I have learned in my life. Fear a man who dies. Don't fear a man who died. Now. I beseech ye brethren. By the mercies of God that ye offer your bodies a living sacrifice unto God, which is your reasonable act of worship. There are times that God does not want songs. No. There are times that God does not want prayer. There are times God does not even want dancing around. There are times God does not want reading any Bible. There are times God just wants the sacrifice of death. It will rise as an incense past the second heavens where demons are. Demons don't need your death. They cannot do anything with your death. It will pass them. They can't cast it. They can't kill it. It passes straight to the throne and is received before the master. And through that death, the blood that comes from your death becomes your agreement, the signature you sign with God for the next five years. Lord, I am still available. Lord, don't replace me with a stone. Lord, I am still here. You have options, but incorporate me in your program. Are you ready to pray? Prayer point number one Lord, make me blind to anything that can make me alive in myself. Whether it's pride, whether it is money, whether it is the flesh, deaden my eyes, deaden my ears, deaden my senses to the impulses that can destroy my process of death. Lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice and pray. Pray for yourself. Pray for yourself. Not Nigeria. Not your family. Not ministry. Pray for yourself. Not your neighbor. Not your brother. Not your sister. Pray for yourself. Lord, let me die the death that brings glory. Let me die the death that brings power. Deaden my eyes, deaden my ears to the impulses of destruction. Deaden my eyes, deaden my ears to the uploads of men. Deaden my eyes, deaden my ears to the flattery of men. The deception of success. Bring me to a point where I am focused in death. Dying daily. Dying hourly. Labarodos of the Alhasim. 
I give you a key one more time. For those who did not hold it this year, you should hold it before you go home. That everything only makes sense when death is in place. That everything only makes sense when the flesh dies. That everything only makes sense. Die daily. Die daily. Die on Monday. Die on Tuesday. Die on Wednesday. Die on Thursday. Die on Friday. Die on Saturday. Die on Tuesday. It is not physical death. It is death to the flesh. Stay on the journey. Obtain grace and stamina. The stamina to continue. The stamina to press. Until you press to strange dimensions of anointing. Strange dimensions of graces. Die until God swears a vow upon your life. Die until the character of the spirit is continually formed in you. Die until you are dead that all of you is replaced by all of him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are going to pray a very serious prayer. Oh God, purge my motives. Listen, purge my motivation. Why do I do the things that I do? Why do I preach? Why do I want money? Why do I want a wife? Why do I want a husband? Why do I want children? Why do I want influence? Why do I want my voice to be heard generationally? What is the intrinsic motivation? We are about to pray and let the light of God, the double-edged sword, penetrate dividing the soul and spirit and let it discern the thoughts and the intents of your heart. Don't be ashamed what you find there. Don't be embarrassed by it. That's what his presence is for. That's what the sword is for. But lift your voice. Forge my motive. Forge my motivation. The psalmist said, touch my heart. Try my thoughts. And see if there's any evil way in me. Then he says, lead me to the way everlasting. Koinonia, pray in this final service. In the Baruto Sodova, a Keta Baruto Soto Pradish, Randa Baranta Sabaru Janeto. Why do I want influence? Why do I want prosperity? Why do I want a voice? Why do I want the anointing? Why do I want the prophetic? Why do I want the healing grace? Why do I want access to the heart of a generation? Pray and cry before God. Pray. Break my pride. Pray. Break my ego. Pray. Break my reputation. Bring me to a point of nothingness where all that is in my heart is a desire to see you glorified. A desire to see your purpose is established. Is someone praying? Few minutes and we are done. But pray. The purity, the purity of my motivation, the purity of my motive, the purity of my desire. Lift your voice and pray. This is a process that makes you become a friend of God. This is a process that makes you become an icon for a generation. Forget about faith. Forget about influence. Forget about prosperity. And die. Purify my motives. Purify my motivation. If you find any motivation that 
that is not the revelation of the Christ. If you find any motivation that is not the enthroning of your purposes, Lord, I allow you to kill it. Pray that prayer. Let it die and die again and again. Listen, hallelujah, we are rounding up, but listen, let me tell you this, happy is a man, see, you see Ba, outside of this journey, we are not worth much, we are very small, it is the excellency of this journey that makes you heavy. That's where the word glory comes from. Kabod, Doxa. The weightiness of God upon a man. The mighty God upon a man. Doing wonders. The treasure that comes from heaven. To turn a man around. So that your life becomes an effulgence. Pages of wonders. Ever increasing wonders. We are going to pray the last point and we are done. Father, the next dimension of my life and my destiny, whatever price it would take to step into it, I obtain grace. The Bible says we should obtain grace. This grace is obtained. It is not assumed. It is obtained. Lift your voice and begin to pray. The next dimension. The next dimension of my prosperity. What is the price, so called? The next dimension of ministry. What is the price? The next dimension of influence. You are praying now, preparing for 2020. Is someone praying? Thank God for the 2019. Thank God for that which was done. For Lord, I set my face like a flint. Is someone praying tonight? What is the price for the anointing of 2020? What is the price for the influence of 2020? What is the price for the impact of 2020? What is the price for the speed of 2020? What is the price for the relevance of 2020? What will it take to be featured in your program? No assumptions. No assumptions. I obtain grace. I obtain grace. I obtain grace to be featured in your program. Come 2020. I obtain grace to remain relevant in the scheme of things. Come 2020. I remain, I obtain grace to remain your friend. Grace to remain a man after your heart. Grace to remain the voice. Please pray for yourself. Pray for your family. Pray for your church. Pray for your ministry. Pray for your business. Lord, what will it take to remain? What will it take to increase? What will it take to advance? What will it take? Let me give us one more prayer point. The Lord is just ministering one more prayer point. We are going to pray. Holy Spirit. You see, the revelation of the Holy Spirit is a mighty secret. Many people know His power, but they do not know His presence. Many people know how to use the anointing that comes from the Holy Ghost to prophesy, to pray for the sick. But the intimacy, Paul said the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the koinonia, 
the fellowship, the participation, the sharing together. Please, you have to use this break to know the Holy Spirit. Thank God for ministers who continue to pray. And based on the assignment he has given in life and in death, will continue to be faithful to it. But you must trust God for intimacy. Holy Spirit, who are you? You are not just a wind. Benny Hinn said you are his friend. Catherine Kuhlman said you are her friend. I can't lie that you are my friend. Reveal yourself to me. Not for the sake of ministry. Not for the sake of prophecy. 99% of our pursuit for the Holy Spirit is to get the gifts that come from Him so that we will increase our sphere and then use it to be relevant. Nonsense. You must shelve those things and say, Holy Spirit, show me who you are. That Shekinah, that presence, that intimacy. Jesus walked with you. You turned him into a sign and a wonder. Spirit of the living God. And for some of us, we have to pray and say, Holy Spirit, from where I left off, let's continue the journey. Because it was not like this. From where I left off, let's continue the journey. Pick my hands again. Turn me into a sign and a wonder. But much more than that, turn me into a friend. We are going to pray, Holy Spirit, manifest yourself. Reveal yourself to me. Lift your voice and pray. Reveal yourself in the quietness of the night. Haven't touched my motif. Haven't touched my motivation. Help me seek you for who you are. Help me know you for who you are. Not for what you can do to my life. Not what you can bring to my table. Let my life never remain the same. We're wrapping up. Aside from those who are under the anointing and those who are kneeling down, if you can hold someone's hand, if there's somebody near you to hold a hand, let's just hold hands as a family of faith, connecting with those all around the world. We will never be the same We've touched your grace Our lives will change We can never be the same Not with your grace Our lives must change Our lives will change Our lives will change Our hearts must change Father, I stand in the presence of your people And everyone who is connected to this grace And connected to this ministry all over this nation, all over the continent of Africa, and all over the world. We stand as a family in this last service. And while thanking you for everything you have done in 2019, we decree and declare, do not withhold administering the death that produces glory in us. In the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray for everyone under the sound of my voice and the millions connecting from different nations. Spirit of the living God, reveal yourself to us. Beyond religion, reveal yourself to us. In the name of Jesus, Father, I stand before your people and as a family of faith we cry the price for the relevance of 2020 the price for the revelations of 2020 the price for the signs the wonders the influence the price to end your trust for 2020 through the ministration of death 
we pray in the name of Jesus may that price be fully paid in our lives I pray tonight and forever search our hearts O God purify our motives and continue to overturn and overturn until everything you find in our hearts is Christ Christ enthroned Christ glorified Christ exalted Christ revealed in the name of Jesus Christ Father I decree and declare right now over everyone connected to this grace that in the name of Jesus let this break be a break that is worth the while let it be full of moments of encounter and intimacy let it be full of moments of plannings and revelations may this break be the bridge between our now and our tomorrow in the name of Jesus for all of you who will be traveling in the name of Jesus I decree and declare whether by road whether by sea whether by air I speak over you by the God of heaven may your journeys be blessed may your going out and your coming in remain blessed in the name of Jesus I send you from this place tonight like the foxes of Samson that you will go in the spirit and the power of Elohim may you go and wreak havoc to the kingdom of darkness may you go and bring life be dispensers of life in your homes return back to your localities as signs and wonders and for as many of you who God will be giving instructions to do many things for the kingdom within the time of the break, the grace will be effective. Let it be released. Everybody who will be on retreat, everybody should be. And everybody who will be on retreat, I pray for you, let there be an open heavens. Accurate delivery of the precepts for the next level of your life in the name of Jesus I decree and declare every challenge in your life now and every challenge in your family and every challenge in your locality by the power that raised Christ from the dead I declare that it leaves you now and forever anyone under the sound of my voice that the spirit of death is roaming around your life and around your family I stand by the God of heaven and I curse it now in Jesus name I speak life to your destiny I speak life to your family I speak life to your body in the name of Jesus Christ I declare that nobody connected to this ministry will be a victim of kidnappers in the name of Jesus Christ and I declare by the power of the Holy Spirit may my God keep you from trouble he will only take you to the place of honor in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus finally before we round up let me pray over our finances a lot has happened in the nation and it is only responsible that I speak over our finances especially during the Yuletide season there are families that sadly can barely even afford something to eat it's not enough to be waiting for welfare for God to use somebody God can open the heavens there is an advantage that the prophetic provides even at times like this every time there was famine and financial squalor it was the prophetic that came to breach and I want to speak over our finances it matters that there are resources in our hands especially within this time there are some of us um, every one of our family members will be depending on us while we are depending on God and probably others so I need to speak into your life I pray for you in the name of Jesus <laughs> between now and next week by the God of heaven let there be a manifestation of strange favor 
in the name of Jesus. Let very strange resources at a corporate level and as an individual level may these resources follow you. Every financial need that will arise, the grace to solve it, I release it upon you. In the name of Jesus Christ. And finally, I pray for you that the love of God, the bond of perfectness, I've taught you that the hallmark of transformation is love, not knowledge. I pray for you from the depth of my heart. The love of God that seals your character, the love of God that seals all that you are, I impart it upon you now. In the name of Jesus Christ. The Bible says, by this shall all men know that we are your disciples when we have love one for another. May the baptism, a fresh dimension of love, let it come upon you. In the name of Jesus, be extensions of that love to your loved ones. Be extensions of that love to your locality. Whatever it would take for you to show that love, may the grace be released upon you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and Amen. Now please, everyone, aside from those kneeling, please keep standing. I want to make the last altar call for the year. The last altar call for the year. There are people here. Let's minimize movements, please. There are people inside, outside, overflow. One, two, three. You are saying, Apostle, while I listen to you, I just felt the need to make it right with Jesus and to make it now. Before the year is over wherever you are or you are saying apostle i want to rededicate my life to jesus please wherever you are we have just two minutes for you i want you to leave your seat aside from those in overflow three overflow three you can just move to your projector stand but you are here i want you to run boldly come and stand here very quickly let's celebrate them as they come you're coming from outside please double up very very quickly god bless you koinonia is this the best you can do Keep coming. God bless you. Keep coming. God bless you. Keep coming. If you are still people coming from outside, please double up, double up very quickly. Thank you for watching our entire video today. If you feel you can bless someone, please join us and spread the gospel by sharing this video on your social media.